Diana, Pam, you guys ready? Diana's muted, so. I'm sorry, what was the question? You're ready to rock and roll? We got a lot to go on. Yep. All right. Then I see the committee members are here. Um, oh, where's Alder? Where's Alder Galvin? Oh, there he is. I couldn't see him behind his glass of milk. Now I can not see him. Okay. All right. I would like to call the meeting uh, via Joint Personnel and Finance Committee meeting for November 2nd, 2020 to order. Um, this is a Zoom meeting. So roll call. Alder Dorf here. Alder Corpus Dax. Here. Alder Bill Galvin. Here. And Alder Brian Johnson. Here. Okay. Um, at this time, I would entertain a motion for approval of the agenda. So moved. So moved by Alder Corpus Dax. Second. Second by Alder Galvin. Um, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those nay. Motion carries. The agenda is approved. We have two sets of minutes to approve. So the first set is approval of the Finance Committee minute minutes from October 13th, 2020. Okay. That works. Waving your arms. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear what. Oh, they're both the same. Oh, I see. One is the finance, one is personal. Okay, so first, uh, minutes from October 13th. So this Dax, second by Elder Johnson. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Motion carries. Okay, now the approval of the personnel committee min minutes from October 13th, 2020. Motion to approve. By Alder Galvin, second yep. by Alder Corpus Dax. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Aye. Motion carries. So the agenda, the uh, minutes are approved. Regular business item one: consideration with possible action on the request to fill the following replacement positions and all subsequent vacancies resulting from internal transfer, engineering aid, staff. So you um, <clears throat> you do have the request to fill in your packet. Uh, so if there's any questions, I can answer them or Director okay. Grenier can answer them. Are there any questions from the from the committee? No? Motion to approve. Motion to approve by Elder Galvin. I'll second it, second by Elder Dorf. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries, thank you. Report for, um, for consideration and possible actions, the request from the Green Bay Metro Fire Department to institute a rate increase for ambulance services. I'll ask the uh, committee first, are there questions on this from any member of the committee or other alders? Yeah. Uh, Alder Galvin. Thank you. Um, I guess one, uh, looking at what we currently charge, looking at what uh, the company we contract with is proposing we charge, is are those fees equal to less than or more than what it actually costs us on these various runs understanding that there is some uh variances you know depending upon what has to happen i'm yeah i'm going to defer that right over to chief litton all the galvin yeah all the galvin uh the uh, fees listed there um typically are they're they're list they're they're set at a rate that maximizes um, both our Medicare and Medicaid reimbursement from the federal government, federal, federal and state governments, um, they in no way reflect the actual costs of doing business. Um, you know, we generate about uh, $3.1 million in revenues on the ambulance calls. Um, and our, our personnel budget for, you know, firefighters slash paramedics, you know, all of them are cross-trained or up in the $15 million. Um, so this is just a, uh, this is a way to you know, that we've had in place for a long time to uh, generate revenue to help pay for the service. By, by no means does it pay for it all. I mean, it's taxpayer supported, obviously. And this is a, a way of recouping some of that in revenue. All right. And then um, in the letter, I think it's the uh, entitled, the one that was sent to um, Alloway Bellevue uh, from Assistant Chief Ryan Gibbons. It talks about uh, transports where we're transporting between say medical facilities and that's uh, it says that's something that we haven't done normally we're just doing it more and more and it says that each municipality would have uh, the benefit of uh, conservative estimate is six thousand annually to the city of Green Bay based upon patient payer mix um, so 
would Alloway and Bellevue also be gaining money from this, or is it just Green Bay? Well, it's uh, both. So um, I think what he's referencing there, so there's two different uh, topics there. So the first one being um, it's going to generate roughly $6,000 more in the rate increase. Um, it will also uh, generate additional revenues. It's called the SCT rate, which is you know, typically like wh where we would pick somebody up from, let's just say, Bellin Hospital, and they're going to be flown out via a medical uh, airplane. So we would pick them up at Bellum, transport them out to Austin Straubel, uh, make the transfer there to the medical team on the, on the uh, plane. Uh, and the reimbursement for that um, is not something that we currently can, can bill for because we don't allow it by ordinance. Um, it's something that we are we have that we are doing more of and we can do more of. Um, so it will generate uh, some additional revenue. I cannot give you. I don't know exactly what that's going to look like um, year in a year out. That's really up to the, you know, the, the facilities and how much of that they have going on. I would speculate that maybe it's going to add another five or six thousand dollars in revenue. Uh, could be higher. Could be a little bit lower than that. Uh, the other issue that you ask about uh, Bellevue and help the merger with uh, Bellevue. And when we um, do start providing uh, medical transport or medical service for them, and that won't be um, you know, under the merger agreement, which is still a confidential document that'll be uh, at some point down the road here. So I'll just leave it like that. Um, but yes, the payer mix, when we, uh, in the end, the payer mix is, is when we bill for, for, bill, for ambulance service in Alloway and or Bellevue, um, those respective villages keep 15% and we get 85% of the billing. Okay. And, and you said according to ordinance, so we're, we're conducting these transports, but according, but by ordinance, we cannot charge for them. Is, is, am I understanding that correctly? Yeah, we had a special case uh, the other day where um, the private ambulance was unavailable and it's becoming more and more um, of, of an issue for us uh, here in, in our region. Uh, and so they had a, a critical need and so we filled that need for them um out of uh because you know courtesy of our, our our citizens our residents and uh um but you know going forward if we if we pass this especially the sct rate uh for that we'll be able to actually bill for it um and collect collect on it and, and that rates at a higher higher level as well okay i guess the one question i have is uh you say Bellevue, uh, when the contract is, is signed and Alloway currently, on these kind of transports, they get 15%. Are there other trans or other actions that the uh, Metro Fire Department takes that they bill for that uh, Alloway and Bellevue will be getting a percentage of what we would bill for? No, that's all, you know, that the, the revenue sharing is, is, is stipulated in the contract between the city and the village of, Bell uh, village of Alloway currently. And it will be so stipulated the same in uh, Bellevue. And, and just for my curiosity, and if it's something you'd rather answer at another time, personally between you and me, that's fine. But uh, why did we come up with an agreement where they get 15% of that? Well, it was part of the, uh, you know, I wasn't here for that negotiation with Alloway. Um, but my understanding is, is you know, uh, at the time Alloway uh, had their own ambulance service. And so they were generating uh, revenues and uh, the, the original split was 50 50 when the, when the agreement first began in 2009 okay or, or 2012 i'm sorry uh and it's weaned down to 85 15 and that's what it is for the per perpetuity of the agreement which we've been doing it with alloway now for eight years so there's seven more years left on that agreement okay all right thank you very much chief i appreciate the information sure all right any other questions i'll entertain a motion to approve Motion to approve. Motion to approve by Alder Galvin. Is there a second? Second. Second by Alder Johnson. Hearing no other discussion, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries. All right. Number three. Report to the committee an after effect approval for emergency Pine Street ramp repairs for the sum of $56,985, sole source attached. So I assume we've read through this. Are there any questions on this? Seeing, yeah. Are there any questions? No? Okay. Just one, Alder Dorf. Yes, Alder Johnson. Director Gunier, I presume that this is coming out of the parking utility budget? If funded by the annual parking ramp repairs uh, contract bid item, so the money that we had set aside for parking ramp repairs is sufficient to, to handle these as well. Okay. 
Okay, thank you. All right. There's no further discussion. I'll entertain a motion. So moved. Second. Moved by Alder Johnson, second by Alder Corpus Dax. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Opposed nay. Motion carries. Right. Item number four, Appro approval for purchase of refuse truck from EnviroTech equipment for the sum of $248,875 to replace equipment that is unrepairable, sole source attached. Are there any questions on this item? Alder Dorf? Yes. Yep. Alder Johnson. Uh, Director Grenier, uh, and I'm going to maybe bleed this over into the next item as well. I noticed that we have two trucks that have died of engine failure. Is that correct? That is correct. And neither one of them is repairable? And, and are these, I mean, what, what was the lifespan on these vehicles? Did we anticipate, uh, I mean, having to replace these anytime soon? These both vehicles were scheduled for replacement. Uh, one of them is a 2004, the other is a 2007. They are, refuse trucks have an eight year life expectancy to them. So they're well beyond their, their service life. These were, uh, at least one of them was new, but are used, but in gently used condition. We, we bought that from uh, another municipality and retrofitted it when we went to automated collection to try to build in um, some planned replacement within the schedule. Uh, rather than buying 16 brand new frontline trucks and having them all come up at once, we had purchased, we retrofitted some of our existing fleet uh, and then purchased some different vintage from neighboring municipalities. And we have been periodically um, replacing those over time. Now, two years ago, we did have a situation where um, equipment replacement was in the budget. It was pulled from the budget, sent to the bonding. And for one reason or another, DPW was not part of that bond request. So there was one year, I think it was two years ago, uh, that we simply went without. So that got us one year behind in our equipment replacement. And every year, again, it's an eight year lifespan on a garbage truck. We have 16 frontline trucks. That makes for real easy math. Every year we, we request uh, two of them to be replaced. And these two were among two that got caught in that, that one year shuffle back. Okay, thank you for that explanation. Any further discussion? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion. Motion to approve. Motion to approve by Alder Galvin. Second. Second, Second by Alder Johnson. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed nay, motion carries. Number six, um, I'm sorry, number five, f approval for purchase of refuse truck from Fredrickson Supply for the sum of $285,000 to replace equipment that is unrepairable, sole source attached. Any further discussion on this item? Move to approve. Move to approve by Elder Johnson. Yep. Second by Elder Corpus Dax. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, nay, motion carries. Number six, for consideration with possible action on the request to borrow $340,000, am I saying this right? $340,000, right, from the state trust fund loan for five year term for revaluation assessment service approved at the August 18th, 2020 Common Council meeting. So this is, we're coming with the request to borrow the money that we approved back in August, okay. Any discussion or questions on this item? Alder Johnson. Thank you. Um, uh, Director Allenbecker, if you could just confirm, because we, we had made that first installment, we paid for that out of um, contingency. I mean, is this something that normally you would borrow for? I mean, as opposed to just budgeting, it's particularly since the agreement is a multi-year agreement? Um, it can be done either way. Um, it certainly can be borrowed, or if there was room in your budget, that would be the preferred option. Um, what happened is there is over $200,000 that is owed between the contract in 2021, and not um, being able, not wanting to increase the mill rate anymore, we did not include that $200,000 into the 2021 budget. And so uh, at this point, it was uh, what I'm putting in front of in front of you is a five-year borrowing request for $340,000. 
to pay for this. Uh, again, the benefit will start. We'll start seeing the benefit of the reval or the change from the reval starting in the 2023 budget. So, how does how does the installment repayment work on this? I mean, is this kicking payment down another year as well, or does that start immediately? How does that work? The installment payments are. Um, gosh, I don't. I think the numbers are in the in the book. Um, it's about 280, if I remember, 200 some thousand for 2021, and the remaining balances in 22. No, I'm sorry. I meant um, I meant the loan repayment. Um, at this point, that is not. Um, we can have it. We can have it straight line. We can have it heavy on the end. We can have it heavy up front. That that's a request that can be sent to the state trust fund loan. Um, state tr state trust fund. At this point, first, there's two two times the um, the council will see it. First time, um, just um, get permission to apply. So that in this case, this is just an application to apply for the three hundred forty thousand dollar. At that point, we have the option to ask what kind of timing we want to pay this. We could put it a very small payment in the first one or two years, knowing that um, the, this will have a bigger impact in the twenty twenty three budget. Again, can be straight line, we can be half um, back-ended or front-ended. However, if the committee has a choice or a recommendation on that, um, we can take that forward to the, um, when we put the request in. Does the interest rate change on that depending on the repayment schedule? It does not. And the interest rate on that was two and a half percent? Two point, correct. It's actually located on page two of the document from the state of Wisconsin and it says 2.5. Okay, and so right now we're just authorizing you to apply for it, but we would actually have to accept later whether or not we want to do that. Do you know when that would occur? Um, uh, yes, well, it takes anywhere from two to four weeks to turn it around. Um, so we, we, again, I wouldn't be able to submit it until, of course, council meeting on November 10th. It could submit it back to them. It would probably roughly, it's going to be two to four weeks after um, I submit the, um, our um, approvals, council approvals. So I would expect it to be December when we'd probably have that final paperwork. So essentially authorizing this today though, we're, we're pretty much consenting um, that, that this is not going to be in 2021's budget. So, I mean, would, would, but is that, is that also with the presumption that we're not doing any debt service on this in 2021? Um, I see what you're saying because then that would say there should be a payment in 2021. Right, and, and I understand it won't show up as an expense, but but I'm curious if we've accounted for any debt service on that in 20. I will tell you every year I take into consideration an expectation on what their debt service is going to be for the following year. And again, this is a this is another year where we are expecting to we would like to take bonding through much earlier in the year. And if we take the bonding through early in the year, then we do have a first year of debt service payment and in on anything we borrow in 2022. So there is an assumption of 2020, I'm sorry, 2021 borrowing. There is an assumption that I will have extra debt service due in, um, in our second payment of the year for, for that. So what I would say is that there's an estimate out there right now. Um, I can't say I specifically took the debt of interest payment that would be due for this fifth, one fifth of this 340,000 and be relatively small. But, but, consideration, but there is an estimate and for, to include um, interest for uh, anything that's borrowed in 2021. Um, so I'm just being honest, I did not particularly take this one into consideration, but there is an estimate for 2021 borrowing built in. So I, I know every debt schedule that we have, I know how much I owe for everything that's already been borrowed, and then we make an assumption in part, um, into our debt service due in 2021. Okay, I, I'm going to support this today reluctantly, only because it, it's one of those things where I think it's it's we're kicking, kicking the can down the road on this again, and I understand why it's being proposed this way. Um, but if I could maybe make one request, and that is when this goes on the council meeting, when we're looking at the order of the agenda, perhaps this item could go after we have the budget discussion. Any further questions? Any other discussion? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion. Motion, item to six. motion to approve by Elder Corpus Dax. Second. Second by Elder Galvin. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Okay. Now, 
update with possible action on tax litigation matters pending before the tax appeals commission and in circuit court um, legal is this something where we need to go into closed session yes i would recommend that this is something we go into closed session for if there are questions regarding these items okay so first i will ask are there any questions regarding these items that we go into closed session. Okay, so motion by Alder John. Is there a second? Second. Second by Alder Corpus Dex. Alder Johnson, would you read the language? Now the committee may convene in closed session pursuant to section 19.85 subsection one, subsection G, Wisconsin statutes for the purpose of conferring with legal counsel for the governmental body who is rendering oral or written advice concerning strategy be, to be adopted by the body with respect to litigation, which it is or likely to become involved, the committee will thereafter reconvene an open session pursuant to section 19.85, subsection two, Wisconsin statutes to take action on items discussed in closed session, if appropriate, and to consider the remainder of the agenda. Okay. All those in favor of going into closed session, say aye. 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 Opposed? All right, we will go into closed session. So we'll wait and all alders may stay on, um, but whoever's running the meeting needs to put people into the waiting room then. Director Folds, are you taking care of um, um, moving them in or? We Just give us the signal when we can do this. So we're admitting people in right now and we are recording. Move that we return back to regular business. Second. Motion by Alder Johnson to return to regular order of business. Is there a second? Second. Second by Alder Galvin. Um, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries. I'll entertain a motion on what we discussed. Alder Johnson. Motion to receive and place in file. Second. Motion to okay, motion to receive and place in file by Alder Johnson. Second by Alder Corpus Dax. Any further discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Motion carries. Back to the agenda item. Number eight. Um, a resolution authorizing 2020 transfer of $45,000 from contingency for legal expenses related to Georgia specific tax appeal for real estate and personal property. Move to approve. Move to approve by Brian Alder Johnson. Second. Second by Alder Galvin. Discussion, hearing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Aye, opposed nay, motion carries. All right, item nine, report of the claims committee. There was one item on claims. Are there any questions? Nope. Hearing I'll none, move I'll, move or move to approve place on file. by Alder. Move to, yeah, we do, what do we want to do? Receive and place on file or approve? Motion to receive and place on file. Okay, is there a second? Second. Second by Alder Galvin, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Motion carries. Item 10. A request by Alder Weary to the Finance Committee which states, due to the ongoing reasons of inadequate staffing and prioritizing of tasks in our law department, I'm requesting we hire a City Ethics, Ethics Incorporated or similar qualified party to draft revisions to the City's Code of Ethics and Code of Conduct as recommended in, in the 2018 findings paid for by the City of Green Bay. And I need to read from a request from Alder Weary, um, who could not be here. When we first implemented the new ethics policy and revised ethics ordinance, we knew there would be changes to help avoid unintended situations or misuses. The city council hired and paid for these revisions over two years ago. Alder Weary goes on and says, I feel it's very important to make these changes in order to get a clear, fair policy ordinance in place. Alderweary also says it is time to put the resources into making these changes or suspend the entire ordinance policy. It is complete. And he concludes by saying the process is broken and has great potential to be abused. So that is a statement from Alder Weary. All right, so let's talk about hiring someone. Doesn't sound like we have a lot of money, but okay. Any discussion on this? So this is Attorney Chavez. Um, okay. I did reach out to a couple of firms to provide assistance in drafting ordinances um, in order to determine whether or not there was um, 
well, availability, but then more importantly, the cost. And the estimates that I received are between 10000 and 20000 for drafting of an ordinance, depending on the amount of work that's required as far as attending meetings, um, receiving input to do revisions and whatnot. Alder Galvin. All right, thank you, uh, Chair. And I, I will have to say, I, I sit on that committee um, and uh, right now we're having a, a hearing on a, on a complaint and we are finding that um, in this hearing and in, in some of the areas that we're looking at, uh, the, the current um, document we have is out of date and we're having some difficulty with that. And I will have to say, I've been on this committee since I became an alder and there's been a couple instances in the past where um, these documents have made it very difficult for complaints to be filed, uh, put through a, the, the litigation process to see if, if actually there was a violation or not. Um, at the same time, I also understand that our, our legal department is, in my opinion, overwhelmed. Uh, there's many ordinances, uh, not just this one, that have been languishing. Um, on the shelf waiting to get done for years. And I understand that uh, everyone in the law department is working to the utmost of their abilities. It's just, there's just not enough bodies. Um, and I'm not sure though, if starting to piecemeal out all our ordinances that have been waiting in this manner is really cost effective, or if we're better off looking for a more permanent solution by hiring you know, full-time or part-time staff to, to accomplish this. Uh, with our current budget right now, um, I'm just I'm just not sure if, if this is the way to go at it, or or if staff in the in the law department can give us some insurances or some kind of a timeline that they maybe think that that these ordinances could be addressed and 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 fixed and and then put put into effect. So as far as that is difficult to assess just because uh, uh, the needs of the department change on a regular basis. So we were originally hoping to have the um, ethics ordinance finalized and brought to the board in September. And then with all of the litigation that has come up because of the election, um, that has severely knocked our, our timeframes back. Um, in addition with the new things that are coming through um, as far as litigation goes, it pulls, um, it, it affects staffing in the sense that it pulls me from it and then it pulls our paralegal from it as well. And then when there is significant briefing required, um, our legislative attorney, unfortunately, is one of our better writers. And so she gets pulled into litigation whenever we have to conduct something in, in house as well that requires a brief. So all that to say, I wish I could tell you that we will have this done by January, we'll have the sign ordinance done by February, we'll have the chapter 33 done by March, um, but what ultimately happens is the needs of the city end up taking priority over things that we're drafting. Um, and that just means keeping things running on a day-to-day -day basis. I have one person who's dedicated to primarily records requests and contracts. Um, you will see it in our budget comments that the records requests were exponential this year. Um, they were just astronomical. So the amount of time that was required to be placed on that, which is mandated by law, um, just kind of eclipsed everything else. And then contracts, if we don't have somebody dedicated to making sure that contracts happen, then the activities of the city falter because we are holding things up. So um, those, those take priority. And then of course I have a city prosecutor who is um, dedicated first and foremost to handling things within municipal court. So she accepts additional work as she's able to, but um, you know the the municipal court keeps her very very busy. So with those, I would say that um, you know we we try to reprioritize as we're able to when we are making determinations as far as what's getting conduct getting done first. Our analysis is always based on what's gonna create the most liability for the city or what has a deadline. And unfortunately this year, we've just been hit by a lot of deadlines. And then you add in um, time off, either due to family needs or um, you know COVID concerns. And it just means that we've gone, we've gotten pushed behind. So I don't have a solid time frame for you. Um, 
I would not provide you with a solid time frame either, just because I think that there are too many factors that affect it. Um, but other than to say that, you know, we share your concerns about making sure that things get fixed. Like I, I don't like our ethics ordinance. I feel like there's a lot of, of places where we can improve things. Um, and then we also wanted to do it comprehensively. So not just doing the ethics ordinance and the code of conduct, but also looking at, um, you know, the, the process that's in place, should there ever be another uh, petition to remove somebody that needs to be clarified as well. Um, and then also the, the procedures that should be followed. Um, we have a lot of ambiguities as far as the procedures themselves. So, you know, we, we share the same concerns. It's just, we don't always have the bodies available to draft. I need. I just need to ask the host. Um, Alder Burnett is trying to get in. has has been trying for a while. He's calling from a number six one five eight zero six eight. So he's texted me and he has said he's. And does anybody see him out there? You're not. So I was. We'll suggest to him that he tries to go into the Zoom meeting again and and do it again. Okay. Okay. Uh, who was next? Um, Alder. Thank you, Ms. Chair. Um, this is for the, uh, our attorney. Um, do you feel that uh, not only with these items, but with all your work in general, that you are understaffed, that you need another full-time or part-time employee? And two-part question. Um, if we looked at these ordinances uh, and prioritize them, which one would you recommend we uh, look at to uh, farm out if we need to do that, if decide to do that, whatever? So um, I think like every department, we have gotten to the point where we are no longer able to keep up with the um, demands of the city. And so, yes, I mean, we could always use more bodies. I've actually said that we've probably used seven attorneys um, and we currently have four just based on the number of, you know, what we've done as far as research goes. But, you know, we, we make do with what we have. Now, as far as, as the prioritization, so like I said, everything kind of changes based on what is happening. So for a while, I would have said the top priority was going to be ethics. Um, as we have started into election seasons, we really up to date. Um, there have been some challenges with the um, inspections this year we found a workable solution but it is something that we really want to get completed before the next election cycle which could be as early as February um, and so that one I think is, is trumping the ethics at this point point. Um, and then chapter 33 really needs to be revamped before we start getting into the renewals for next year um, and then on top of that, I think everything kind of gets pushed down because we have building and inspection codes, building and housing inspection codes, I believe it is, um, that we need to demonstrate to the to the, the state that we are bringing our code into compliance. So I would say that right now our top priority is getting that one completed. Um, and then I would probably say it would be signs and then a toss-up between ethics and chapter 33. Whereas three months ago, it would have been ethics, then uh, probably signs, and then 33. Okay, so let's just focus then on the request is that we hire a qualified party to draft revisions. And that would cost, you said, between $10,000 and $20,000. Um, Correct. And, but it is something that our law department can handle given the time, given time. And we can't say exactly how much time. So that is correct as well, right? Correct. Okay. Committee or other elders, any thoughts on that specifically? I would, I would personally not be comfortable in uh, spending another ten to twenty thousand dollars on legal, we just 
talked about other things and we are going to be needing other monies when we get to the budget and I would not be in favor of doing that. I think we just need to wait a few, um, see if our legal department can get this done. Even, and I agree that it needs to get done. Anyone else? Um, uh, first Alder Johnson, then Alder Stoyer. Well, I, I think there's a second piece to that communication, which, which at least we ought to broach, which is if, if it's not done, should we suspend the the actual ordinance? I don't I don't know if we can actually do that. I, I mean, Attorney Chavez, could you comment on that piece of it? Um. So it's a little bit unusual because so that is something that what we what no what I would actually recommend at that point is we just repeal until um, we get it revised. So and that would go to. Um, probably the ethics board for them to review. Um, yeah, I believe they would go to the ethics board um, to basically repeal it until we have something to replace it with. Um, you know, we have we have ability to not enforce necessarily, but not in the case where we have a due process hearing involved. So either we have it in place or we need to take it off the books. Committee. Alder Storyer, did you still have a oh. comment? Yeah, it might be. Thank you, Chair. Um, this might be a little bigger picture look at it. I, I think one of the issues that you know Alder Weary and maybe some of the other Alders have, like when we bring communications in and we're looking at doing ordinances, you know, we're we're thinking that it, they might be done in a timely fashion, but according to Attorney Chavez, it looks like we're up against it with a number of things. So I don't know if there's some way for for sake of transparency, if there was a way to kind of look at what we have in the in the pipeline as far as the different ordinances. I mean, we're gonna be looking at housing next year, um, you know, amongst others. And I just would like to know, do we need to hold back and not ask for things or do we need to at least see where we're at. You know, are we halfway through one ordinance? Are we two thirds of the way through another ordinance? I think for us alders, we need that information so that we can move forward and try to make some uh, decent decisions. So, okay, but, but Steen, laser I know focus I realize, on, on this. I know <laughs> you're this. focusing on that, but that's to. kind of, that's got to be thought of too. So. I have a suggestion. Alder Weary was not able to make it. This was Alder Weary's. Um, I really think he. this has gotten to be a much bigger discussion. I wonder if we might be able to hold this when we don't have a budget to look at afterwards. If we could just hold this till the next meeting, um, would the committee be all right with that? Is I would there, be okay with that. That's a good want, motion. Okay, motion by Alder, Alder Galvin then to hold till our next finance meeting. Is there a second? A second. Second, Alder Corpus Dex, discussion on holding. In that case, um, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Okay, motion carries. We'll hold this till our next meeting. All right, here we are. The reason for the meeting. The review and approval of the mayor's recommended 2021 budget, including out-of-state travel requests. So this is how I think we are going to do this this evening. I'll have the mayor um, do an intro um, we will probably take in an hour to two hours. I'll see how things are going, but we can't all be sitting here. We've already put in over an hour for this first part of the meeting. Um, and we will run it as a regular meeting. Let's have some discussion before we begin though, this, this portion. Uh, it was brought up, should we allow members of the public to speak? Who would like to speak on that? Uh, Alder Galvin. Well, it would be nice to have the public speak uh, before, I, I think. Um, what we're going to be doing here is actually fleshing out the proposed budget and coming up with what we feel is going to be the permanent budget. Um, and I'm 
you know, I, I just wonder if that might be better saved uh, for the actual council meeting where that will be done formally. It seems to me that in the past we haven't done it. Uh, one, because this could be hours upon hours long. And two, the comments they make could end up being a moot point um, in the end. Um, and three, because they have had an opportunity in the public meeting to speak if they wanted to. I think we have to also remember that, that they got an opportunity to speak. Right. I haven't uh, allowed it at this time for, right. for those very facts. And um, and I think uh, I haven't heard any complaints from any of my constituents uh, during any budget process because they weren't allowed to speak at this portion of the process. So I would, uh, my recommendation would be that we do it as status quo and we save the comments for the actual council meeting. Okay. Alder Johnson, Alder Corpus Dax. Alder Corpus Dax. Um, I see this as a regular personnel finance meeting, and we've never not allowed public to speak at those meetings. So I, I'm fine with having the public here speaking. Um, I, I don't think we have a whole lot of public here. Um, so I don't believe it's going to take very long if we do allow them to speak. I um, think that we should allow them to have their um, time to speak in the beginning of the meeting and then we can um, move on from there. I'd hate to have them to wait until the end, um, wait until we get through all of this and then just allow them the chance to speak at that point. Thank you, Alder Curtis Dex. Alder Johnson? Is that a motion? No, I, well, I'm asking if you have any comments. We're having some discussion. <laughs> Well, look, I think what I would prefer to see is uh, have the mayor maybe give us his overview, assuming that that's the intent. Um, and then I, I would like to at least allow members of the public to speak if there are any on the call that would like to do that. To Alder Corpus Dax's point, I don't think there's a ton of them on the call, so. I would like to do it this way. I would like to do it at the beginning, before the meeting starts, um, to allow members of the public, if they wish to speak, and to give them three minutes, and and to have that be the time that they can speak, because again, there was a time that was set aside for them to speak, and they will be speaking again if they want to at the city council meeting. So I would like to do it before we even start into the budget. I think it will, I think it will break it up too much if we let the mayor start and then we let the public go. So, but I wonder if uh, the mayor has any comments or if anyone else has any comments. No, I don't have any comments. Perfectly happy to have the, the public make some comments right now if that's what you as chair would prefer. So whatever the committee decides, fine by me. I'll make a motion to open the floor for interested parties. Second. A motion has been made and seconded to open the floor for interested parties to speak on the budget. You will be given three minutes to speak. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Is there anyone from the public who wishes to speak? I will we have I um, Michael Shea. Well, did he raise his hand? I didn't see him raise his hand. If you wish to speak, please raise your hand. Okay, Michael Shea is raising his hand. Do, Celestine, do you have a timer that, that we could put up, please? I am actually not running this meeting. Who I'm attending, not running. All right. Um, uh, who, would, who could be our timer for us? What I can do is I can just keep track of three minutes, and I can let the person know when it's three Thank minutes you. Up. Okay, I Director Falls will keep track. Okay, Mr. Shea, proceed. And please state your name and address for the record. You need to unmute yourself. Mike Shea, 2751 Woodstock Court. Um, first off, I just wanna say, as far as raising your hand goes, there's a lot of people without cameras and I did raise my hand in the function on Zoom. Not I don't, I'm not cameras, running the meeting. There's a lot of people that can't do what I just did, just so you know, if public wants to speak, you'll have to find a different way. Um, but to my statement, uh, when we need to increase the bottom line, you have two options. You can increase revenue, which in this case is raise taxes, um, or you can cut costs. Last week when the mayor uh, presented his proposed budget, 
I asked what areas were found to cut costs. The mayor pointed out cost savings in travel and training and was quite proud of that. After digging into the budget, I found that the answer seemed a bit disingenuous because if you look on page 28 of the proposed budget, the mayor explains that travel and training as well as the department administration have cut costs not by choice, but because of environmental factors outside the control of the city. So what this means is having less elections next year and COVID changing the landscape of how we travel and train, those two areas automatically went down. There was no look and see how we can reduce cost. He just kind of took the low hanging fruit and said, hey, great, we're cutting costs. Um, so my challenge would be for the for this committee and the city council at large is to look for ways to cut cost, not just have things that happen because of outside environmental factors. If outside environmental factors can cause positive change like that, then I would suspect that inside factors could find greater ways to cut cost and waste. So I don't know. Thank you very much for letting me speak. Thank you, Mr. Shea. If there's anyone else from the public who would like to speak, please call out to me um, and identify yourself. Just unmute yourself, say that you'd like to speak. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak? Last call. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak? Okay. This time I'll entertain a motion to close the floor. Motion, motion to close, to close floor. the floor. Second. Okay. Motion to close the floor by Elder Galvin. Second by Elder Corpus Dax. Discussion. Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. The floor is now closed. All right, so we'll go back to the meeting. Um, I first would like to um, preface by thanking Director and Assistant Director Manley for the hard work that they have done to put this budget together. I would also like to recognize the efforts of all of the directors in paring down as much as they could. Um, we have lost a great deal of revenue this year, so um, we really are coming in, in with a what I believe to be a reasonable budget. Um, I would like to thank all of the alders that are attending tonight, which are Alder Corpus Dax, Alder Gerlach, Alder Galvin, Alder Stevens, Alder Scannell, Alder Johnson, Alder Vanderlees, Alder Stoyer, and Alder Brunette. Um, Alder Lefebvre called, and she is ill, and has asked me to make some comments on her behalf at the appropriate times. Um, Alder Weary had another commitment and he has also asked me to make a comment at the appropriate time, which I will do. And finally, I would like to thank Mayor Genrick for bringing this budget forward to us. And that, we have 213 pages, so Mayor Genrick, take it away. Thank you, Chair Dorf, uh, for those comments. I would echo all of them, especially the ones thanking um, Director Ellen Becker and, and Pam Manley and all of our department heads and staff who played a role in yeah, an enormous undertaking on their parts. Uh, so very appreciative of all the effort devoted to it. Um, I will, I'll dispense with some of my introductory comments that uh, I offered um, at, the, uh, at the public meeting that we had last week and just kind of jump right into um, 2021. I've, Pam Manley, if you or Director Ellen Becker are able to sh allow me to share my screen, I can just um, share that presentation. All right. Can I ask you a Yes, Alder Galvin, go ahead. Um, I, and this happens every year. Uh, we have the actual hard copy budget book, and then we have several computer models of the budget. And as uh, when Mr. O'Shea was making his comments, he um, referenced a page. And when I looked it up, it's something totally different than what he was referring to. Um, because I'm trying to do this off my laptop, 
can we use the the paper copy or can we at least try and make a reference for those of us using the paper copy what page we need to go to so we're all looking at the same animal at the same time yes we'll be able to give you what the um, electronic document page number is and then we'll also tell you the page number on the in the book so that whichever one you're following we'll try to in every time we'll try to give you that reference thanks so much i just i hate feeling lost uh, great point great point alder calvin thank you <laughs> Okay. All right, with that, we'll jump in. Um, just noting budget highlights, this is a pretty basic budget. So it's a, you know, it's a, it's a short list here, really prioritizing public safety, uh, making sure that we're not using one-time budget fixes, which is you know, sort of add to the uh, structural problems that we've faced previously and, and would again if we were to use one-time funding. Um, and then just continues to put the city on a, on a sustainable fiscal path. This, uh, this 3% um, requested increase in the mill rate is not a request that I take lightly, um, but I think it is necessary in order to maintain those essential um, public services, including uh, most importantly, public safety. So um, with regard to public safety, you know, coming into office, I think of you know that um, the prior budget took the number of funded police officers from 194 down to 180. In the budget that was approved for the current year, we went to 185 by mid-year, and this uh, proposed budget takes us up to 187. Um, the highlight with that, the addition of those two positions uh, would enable us to create another team of behavioral health officers to work directly with uh, a county clinical social worker. This kind of doubles um, our capacity in that regard. Uh, thankfully, the county board did um, last week. And so if we were to um, add these two positions to the police department, we would be able to add that additional crisis intervention team, which I think has been very successful in addressing these crisis situations, uh, which can be some of the most dangerous uh, and violent for both our citizens and our officers to face. Uh, and so I think based on the positive experience with this team, um, the need for us to do more in that area, uh, we would love to expand upon that work and, uh, and make that possible. Um, additionally, we have, I, uh, we have suggested adding another firefighter position back. Uh, this was held open last year for the reason that uh, the chief didn't feel it made a whole lot of sense to run an entire recruitment class just for one position. Um, so that position is being added back, uh, proposed to be added back in the 2021 budget. Um, this just makes the point that these are the only three positions that are being um, and being added, being funded in addition to what's being done in the in the 2020 budget. Um, so no other positions for 2021. Um, this speaks to you know what we're facing as a result of COVID in terms of uh, revenue losses. So hotel and room tax, um, pretty significant, 190 thousand proposed um, drop there in 2021, investment income 470,000, uh, suspected that that will drop off. Um, you know, some park revenue, park and wildlife sanctuary, um, rentals or programming, $52,000 there. And then an increased cost in the, in the form of a, our landfill monitoring requirement. Um, but then some, some savings here, um, you know, 153,900, in the gas, oil, and lube line. Um, just some re-estimates on the part of finance, but then also um, some savings within police department, uh, given the fact that, that they will be using hybrid vehicles or bringing on more hybrids, um, so some savings there. And then that travel and training reduction that, um, that we were able to make based on past practice and also given the fact that, uh, that I think we're gonna be doing a lot of trainings in 2021, at least for the foreseeable future. And then this, um, you know, a few different numbers here, just in terms of, of uh, expenditure growth. Um, the one really positive number here that, uh, that I pointed to in my presentation to the public um, relates to growth in the TIDs. So we have seen a 28% um, growth in TIDs, um, which is really, you know, it's tremendous. I think it's really important to identify um, the you know the the prudent use of TIDs and and the way that they can act as a as a really constructive development tool. Um, so it's important to note that um, that that's been very successful for us. Uh, also, you just see the you know the overall growth in valuation in the city. That's that's a a big number there. Um, and thankfully, 
Bay, um, Green Bay continues to grow. You know, by and large, we're sort of landlocked, so we have to be smart about uh, how we develop and redevelop the city. Um, but we continue to see um, value uh, creep up year after year. Um, and then you see on the bottom the, the 3% proposed um, increased in the city's tax rate. Um, while at the same time, you know, there's that, there's, you know, that difference between the equalized valuation, um, which is actually seeing a reduction because, you know, we, we haven't done that citywide revaluation in so long um, that there's that, that gap between um, the increase in the, in the assessed mill rate and the, um, the equalized. And then Director Ellen Becker, if you want to walk us through the, the next few slides and I can chime in here and there. Absolutely. Thank you, Mayor. Everyone knows that, um, well, as you know, there are some um, limits in which the city must stay within for at our budget time period. One of them co is called the expenditure restraint program. And so this is a calculation. Um, just kind of want to walk through it real quick. The city was fortunate enough to have net new construction of 1.55%. Um, the state takes a factor of that, giving us a 0.9% increase that they allow us on expenditures. Then they take the CPI projection. Um, that's a one4 that and they rounded at about 2.3. That is saying that expenses can go up 2.3% over last year's budget, um, allowing us to go up taking expenses. Again, there's still more calculation behind the scenes, uh, but that still allows us to go up just over about $2.1 million. That is a limit in which we can um, go up. And um, if we can stay within the, that factor, within that limit, we do get a state shared um, state aid amount of about $1,572,000. So it is definitely worth it for the city to stay within this. Uh, um, again, we have to stay within about 2.3% increase from the year before and that we will get a payment of about 1.6 in the following year. And so this has been an ongoing program. So we do continue to get about 1.5, 1.6, um, or that's where we're at right now um, in this ex expenditure restraint program. Um, we have an, the second limit is um, we call it's a levy limit. Same same situation. Um, they just want to make sure that the um, cities um, stay within um, a, um, a calculated increase. Um, a lot of last year's levy increase. They take any adjustments that you took from the year before. We get the adjustment of the net new construction, which I talked about before, of 1.55. That gives us an increase in our levy. They subtract the personal property aid. Again, kind of a complicated calculation. Um, anything unused last year, we get to add back. Um, so at this point, this calculation says we are allowed to take go up. Uh, our levy can go up $1.8 million, and that is where we are. Um, the proposed budget shows us $1.8 million increase in levy. So this is showing that we are within our two different limits that are uh, proposed has come down from the state. Can I ask a question, Director Ellen Becker? Yes. Does our current, the proposed budget is basically right at the limit. That means there would be no ability to add anything to the budget? Um, no, that is a, a, a not quite accurate um, on expenditure restraint. We are um, behind the lower um, expenditure restraint at this time. And the levy limit is um, we are taking an adjustment that we're allowed to take. It's a debt adjustment. So at this point, I have taken, when I did the calculation, I had taken a debt adjustment to match um, the amount that this levy is increased. We do have capacity to either go up slightly or down. So we do have capacity to go up or down um, based on uh, this allowance and this adjustment that we can take. Okay, thank you. And this slide is kind of an interesting one because it just it kind of tracks um, the reduction in state aid that municipalities have seen over the last couple decades. So if you use 1999 um, as, the, as the start date there, we're essentially down $12 million in, in $99. Dollars, uh, if you take us to the, the current day, so when you look at you know an eighty seven million dollar budget, twelve million dollars on an annual basis is a is a significant reduction in revenue, which is uh, why many of us in local government are saying to our state leaders, you know, we really need increased shared revenue support um, and or some flexibility with regard to local sales taxes. Um, so at the municipal level, we don't have the authority to levy a, a sales tax um, like the county does. And so uh, many of us at the local level uh, have been advocating for, as I said, increased shared revenue, um, some flexibility with local sales tax. Mayor? Yes. 
Alder Galvin, go ahead. Thank you. Just a quick question on, on this, and, and it probably helps that you were in the legislature at one time. Um, this reduction in state, this was done by um, the state legislator and the governors, whoever they were at that time, who reduced the state aid and then gave us back the savings technically um, that we've seen announced a few times over the years. Is, is that how they, they came about this? Yeah, you know, I think it's, um, you know, it's been something that you can't put necessarily on either party. It's been um, a trajectory over the last couple decades where there's just been uh, less and less support for local governments. Um, and, you know, talking with my colleague mayors just over the weekend, um, talking with a few folks, you know, we are kind of putting together a shared agenda uh, requesting some significant increases in, in shared revenue and that access to the local sales tax because, you know, we're in a really tight spot here. We're heavily reliant on property taxes um, and we live under these levy limits. And so, um, you know, as I've said, it creates a situation where you're sort of overtaxed and underfunded at the same time. And uh, something just has to give at a certain point. All right. Thank you. And then this just kind of breaks things down by department, you know, not a lot surprising here. Uh, police and fire make up the vast majority of the, or the, the majority, I should say, a little over half of the, um, almost half of the, the city's, um, city's budget, which makes sense. Um, public safety, you know, should be the priority here. But then obviously, you know, public works a, a big chunk, um, parks and rec, um, significant slice there. And then, you know, debt service is, is another, mm -hmm. another one there. Uh, Mayor, on this one too, uh, yeah. just the, for the public's uh, uh, information, I've had people tell me that our debt service is 17% of the budget, uh, which obviously looks like that. But when it says 9% comes from other funding, what, what other funding is that? Uh, Mayor, um, correct, you're right. Overall, our funding is, our debt service is, and that is the amount of debt that is um, obligated, and we do have to pay that in 2021. Um, but the other funding, so a general levy means it's coming from the tax dollars. The other funding is going to be your sanitary store, Bay Beach, and the TIFFs, um, and parking. Um, all those funding sources, we do pay the bill, um, but we collect 100% of that back from those different um, utilities or those different divisions. Okay, so the, the levy on an actual homeowner, 8% actually comes out of that. It's yes. not 17. Yes, all that's right. correct. Yep, that, yes, that is correct. All right, thank you very much. Yeah, that's a good question, Alder, and you know, you never wanna see that, that number creeping up, obviously, but Director Ellenbecker, could you speak to where we're at with regard to um, capacity for debt spending allowable under state law? Yes, um, so both, fund, both debt, the ones funded by the general levy and those funded by um, the other funding sources, sanitary storm, TIF, those all are, um, used in the calculation for the state um, debt um, calculation. And as of um, the end of 2019, um, we were w under 50% of what the state allows. They allow you 5% of your equalized value. And at the end of the 2019, we were at about 50% of that. So we're really at about 2.5% of our equalized value. Great. Thanks, Director. Any comments on this slide, Director sure. Alder? <laughs> Any comments here, Director Ellen Becker? Um, yes, sorry about that. There's a lot of numbers on the screen. It matches yeah. the numbers that are in the um, book. It just shows you some history on, on the different departments and the different type of expenses. Um, so you can see a five-year trend. Um, I think there was a question on why the uh, IT um, information tightened up quite a bit. And that is actually just a switch from farther down on the line. There's something called capital equipment. Last year, there was 450,000 in their budget. And this year, it went to 144, down 300,000. And then the information technology line, and they went from 1 million one to 1 1.4. And so it went up about 300,000. It's really a switch from one line to another. Um, we were putting something in um, what is an annual cost for software and we we're putting in a capital equipment. And since it's an annual cost, we decided we put it into the normal operating budget because that would be really qualified more as an operating expense. So that was a large switch from one line item to another. Thank you. And then just another way of breaking down the, the city's expenditures. 
um, you know, big chunk coming from salaries and, and fringe benefits in the form of employee compensation there, and then breaks out the other, the other costs. So here you see, you know, obviously positive growth in uh, our, our property valuation for the last several years, up to, you know, nearly $7.4 billion um, in terms of the equalized value. And then that assessed value is, is significantly lower, as we've noted, which, which really um, necessitates that citywide revaluation. And then you see that, that divide again with the, you know, the mill rate creeping up but then on an equalized uh, basis, uh, trending down significantly. Again, reinforcing that point. Mayor? Mayor? Yes. Yes, thank you, Mayor. I'm just wondering, you know, you look at some of these graphs and, uh, you know, the initial 2012 up through 2017, you know, the, um, the equalized tax rates are higher than the assessed rates or I'm sorry, the assessed rate, so then they get higher, they get higher in the last couple of years. So is mm -hmm. part of that due to housing or I don't know if i uh, can talk about that briefly, you know, why those changed like so much? Yeah, I mean, that's really a big part of that is due to the under, under assessment of the property values in the city since we haven't had that citywide revaluation since 2004. Um, the value of people's property has increased significantly, but the assessments have not. Okay, well, it'll be interesting to see how the reval will come into play down the road, but I'll, I'll let you continue. Thank you. Mayor, if I can jump in and, and really yes. take on just on top of exactly what you said, and I think it's just anyone who's in it to try to sell a house now, right now in most cases, um, the people are selling homes for more than they're assessed for. Back in 2012, 13, in those cases, you were, you were in most cases, you were, your house was selling for, what was it, it was assessed for or, or less. And so it's really just, like you said, it's the housing market, it's the, it's the economy, how it has switched over the last couple of years and how um, the value of our houses now have, has gone up. And that on this chart. Yep, absolutely. Okay, so that brings us to the end of the presentation. Um, before taking questions, I, I do, you know, just want to make the point um, prompted by Mr. Shea's question again. Um, at our last meeting, I, I missed an opportunity to, to note a couple of changes. Director Ellen Becker noted one of them, however, pretty significant changes in um, health insurance offered to our employees. Um, spouses of employees now will be required um, to to attain uh, obtain health insurance from their employer if it's offered um, and then there's a there's a support program in place uh, to assist employees that are in that position um, but that's a pretty significant change that we're asking of our employees and and will um, you know we'll bring in some some pretty significant savings as a result the other thing to note uh, is something that I proposed with um, with the current last year which is a reduction in the cost of living increase for our employees from 2% to 1%. Um, council reversed that, that proposal at our, uh, at our council meeting last year, um, but I am making that proposal again, unfortunately, you know, wish obviously I, I didn't have to go that route, um, but I am you know, asking for that, that 1% rather than a 2% increase. And it's important to note, and Director Ellenbecker can, can chime in here, or Director Folds as well, um, it's, I believe it's about a 57,000 dollar you know savings or expense if you were to bring that back up to two percent um, but the savings in the out year is even is even more significant so in 2022 I believe it's in the neighborhood of 200 plus thousand dollars that that um, that change would have on the city's budget if council had agreed with with my proposed budget last time around you know that that would have made things a bit different obviously um, you know, saving a, a, in the neighborhood of $200,000. So just wanted to note that as well. You know, we are asking our employees um, to, to deal with that reduction in the cost of living increase. And these are tough times for everybody. And, and um, you know, so we recognize that. <clears throat> Mayor Genrick, I can jump in here. Um, so with the, in regards to the health insurance, so right now we're looking at a decrease in a savings of about, of about um, 
I think $200,000. I think it's a decrease of about 1.3%, around 1%. If you look at if we would have stayed with our health insurance and did not make that change, we would have had about a 4% increase, anywhere from, I think, a 2% to a 4% increase. So that could have been a two hundred to $700,000 increase to our budget if we did not make that change. So I think that's um, worth noting to the Common Council that they did make an intentional change and that did save about two hundred to seven hundred thousand dollars. Right, and should note that I think you know many alders are probably familiar with the benefits committee, um, but for those who aren't, you know they they had a very significant role in um, in vetting these different ideas and and bringing them forward. So appreciative for the input of our employees that serve in that capacity. So with that, um, entertain other questions from council. There are no other questions, we will move on. Alder Dorf? Yes, Alder Johnson. Thank you. Uh, Mayor, I do have a couple of questions. Um, you talk, with the addition of the two police officers, you have alluded to the creation of a crisis intervention team working with the county. Can you just explain that a little bit more? I'm not sure that I understand how that works. Yeah, so that's a good question. There, there is um, this crisis intervention team that is existing today. So we have two officers that are behavioral health officer trained uh, and they work in tandem with a, cl a county clinical social worker um, to respond to crisis situations. Um, with the addition of, of two officers going from 185 to 187, um, chief and the rest of the department, they're gonna be able to create <clears throat> another team of these crisis intervention trained officers to work with an additional uh, social worker that was um, that will be provided by the county thanks to county board approval of that position last week. Okay, thank you for that explanation. Um, and it, Alderdorf, if you don't mind, I have a couple of questions that are actually just more like overarching and aren't specific to line items. Would it be appropriate for me to ask those now before we get into line items? Me, I mean, I'm not sure we will necessarily get into line items. We're going to be going department by department. So um, that's more of, of the vision that I have for this meeting. Would it be questions you're going to be asking of directors? Well, I have a couple questions that would apply to all departments. Um, well, let's try it and see. Go ahead, okay. Alder Johnson. Okay. And some of these are a little bit more specific. So um, we talked about the, um, the loss of hotel room tax. Um, if I see, you know, when we, um, and this was actually before I was elected, we did the deal with the county where I thought we gave up hotel room tax in exchange for the county being able to do that half a percent sales tax. Am I, am I missing something there in terms of how that operated? Um, no, I can jump in there. Um, every municipality get, gets to keep a very small portion of the room. Bay gets to keep 4% of the 8% that's collected. Overall, 10% is collected, 2% right off the top goes to the CBB, then 8% is put into the bank. The city then gets 4% of that 8%. So it's a very, very small piece of um, the total amount that's collected. The city gets that 4% and that comes into our operating budget. The remaining all goes into a, a pool and that helps pay for the KI Convention Center 1 pays for the rush center, helps pay for the KI convention too, and any remaining money, um, some is split to CVB, and then it's gonna be going to the expo hall. So it's kind of a waterfall effect, but the city does get, again, 4% of the 8% that's collected. Okay, appreciate that clarification. Um, you know, one of the things that I've just noticed about some of the other departments, you know, I look at like Bay Beach, where it looked like hey, we're, we're expecting kind of almost to hit full revenue. But then on this side, we see like hotel room tax where maybe we're not expecting to hit that. I mean, are, were, were these projections just sort of like, and I understand this is the era we live in, but it was kind of like throwing a dart at the wall and taking your best guess at where you think it might land or was this done in conjunction in, in consultation with some of the other municipalities? Um, well, what it, um, yes, um, it was taken into consideration. Um, um, Dr Director Manley and I also attended a room tax commission meeting about two weeks ago. Um, so Pam, if you have anything, you can certainly jump in, but we met with them and, and there's your hotels at this point are still about 33% capacity. Some are making up to 50%, but it's pretty low yet. Um, we did, they have now gone through and projected out the next two years of estimated room tax um, 
where they think they're going to be at. Very, very conservative number. But again, we are, we are working with all those surrounding municipalities using kind of general similar assumptions. Um, there is an assumption that um, really well into next year um, that the room tax is going to be lower than what it was in previous years. There is an expectation that there will be a Packers season next year, but um, the large amount of our, a large percentage of our room tax comes in really from your July to your December time period. Um, so we do have over half of a year that the, the assumption is that um, hotels are still going to be at very low, anywhere from the 30 to 50%. Um, okay. So there, there was quite a bit of discussion calculation. Again, it is an estimate whether you decided to put 20,000 back in it or take 20,000 out of it. You know, we were at 440. If I remember last year's budget, we might be at 250. Again, it's a projection. It's an estimate. It, could it be a little bit conservative? But conservative, it, it could be. Um, well, you know, year over year, we we kind of we could see the number growing. This year, um, we are not going to be coming close to hitting our number. Um, it is an estimate. It's a calculated estimate. I appreciate that. Um, uh, Mayor, this question I think would probably be for you. You, you alluded to the, uh, the firefighter position and you indicated um, that there was a position that we did not fill last year. However, did we budget for that position last year? And the reason I'm asking, are we looking to fill a new position and one we left open or, or is this just one position? It might be better left when we get to that department. Alder Johnson, I would like perhaps the fire chief to answer that, but I don't want to start going to directors right now. Sure, sure. And I'm happy to wait on that. I just thought I'd bring it wait up. Wait on that one. Wait on that one. Go ahead. What's your next one? Yep. Okay. And then, um, and this one does span across multiple departments, so I think it, it makes sense to ask now, but the, um, the budgeted losses related to interest or investment income, could, could we talk about that in a little bit more detail? Sure, I can start on that one. Um, again, this is just a calculated an estimate. A year ago, um, a year ago, we were at about 1.75 on an average of a return higher. I can see a man, uh, Director Manley saying it was even higher than that. So even could have been as high as 2% based on some long-term long -term investments and what we were getting in money, money markets. Um, at this point, any money markets, we are fortunate enough if we're getting about a 0.15 or um, maybe up to, okay, that, that'd be a stretch. Okay, so we went from almost a 2% down to about 0.15. So um, our interest has dropped. And again, what that means is all, also our longer term investments, some of the agencies and treasuries that we'll put out sometimes on what we call as our reserve. We um, put out for a longer period of time of you know anywhere from 18 months to three years. Um, those right at this point, we can't, um, we can't get them as, as high. So again, it is a calculated um, estimate, um, going from 700,000 down to, if I remember about 200 is what we have in the budget, somewhere in that ballpark. Um, it's a calculated number. Um, uh, from uh, the, uh, any projections that we're hearing, that that number is not, uh, not expected to rebound. It could be a quite a long time before that would rebound back up. Okay, um, so, so it's really in response to the market conditions and less about like a direct impact. I mean, COVID could be what's causing the market conditions, but it's really the market conditions and how that fluctuates. 100%, it's absolutely markets and projected that that rate is not gonna bounce back up within the next um, 14 months. Okay, and then uh, just one last question. Um, have, Cause we, we, I remember I submitted a communication a while ago about doing an annual fee schedule. Uh, I, 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 should we anticipate seeing other fee adjustments in the upcoming year, has that all been accounted for as we go through this budget process? Um, there has been some fee adjustments um, taken into consideration. Um, I will tell you that actually last this past year, we took a reduction in liquor license um, fees um, that has not been taken into consideration. Next year, we would have, we'll have it going back to what their original um, fee, fee structure were was. Um, a DPW, many of the departments continue to look at their fees and um, um, have some, have built in um, increases um, in places where they feel that that would be necessary. Um, I'm, I'm, unfortunately, um, we're still waiting on the finalizing of um, what I think it's called Muni, Muni Codes. In this case, I might be referring back to our attorney, um, Chavez, um, for the answer on that. But I mean, that was one of the answers that that, that was going to help make sure that on an annual basis that these um, rates were going to be increased. But I will tell you, um, each department does continue to look at their rates and see if there's a way that they can increase their fees. Um, if it's feasible, either that they can justify that they have more expenses than what the fee is, or if, 
or if you know if it's sizable dollars i mean we might have something that we only collect ten dollar ten fees and um, we may not have gone through that process of increasing the fees but um in most cases they are being looked at okay okay yep all right thank you we'll move on um we're going to begin with the common council page 15 and is that also the page on the electronic copy? And if you're talking, Director Ellen Becker, I cannot hear you. I'm sorry, I was, uh, yeah. Um, okay, um, we're gonna start with page 15, which is Common Council. Um, are there any questions on that? Is this also the page for those people using the electronic copy? Okay, the electronic copy uh, would be on online on our in our within the city website, and that would be it. Actually, we're going to add it adds five pages, so it would be page twenty if you're on the electronic version. Otherwise, your paper copy would be page fifteen. So for every one of these, I'll just add five pages. Correct. I can handle that math. All right. Any questions for council? No. All right. We'll go on to mayor's office, pages 19. I mean, was there a question? Um, no, at this point then um, um, either, usually we go through line by line and we do actually re, re, um, approve the budget um, each That's line. That's right, we have to approve this budget, the council budget. Okay, so hearing no questions, I will entertain a motion to um, approve the budget on page 15, page 20, electronically for the common council That's from true. our committee. Uh, Second. Motion by Alder Corpus Dax. Second. Um, or did you have a question, Alder Corpus Dax? Actually, I have a comment. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, seeing that the budget, the proposed budget that we have in here is, we're going from a two percent um, cost of living increase down to a one percent cost of living increase for city staff. I at this point would make a recommendation to hold the council budget and we've gone through the rest of it because I feel like if we're looking for staff to um, potentially only receive a 1% budget increase, I feel like we have to take our share as well. We will not get an increase. Do you understand that? part that council does not get an increase right in i understand salary. that okay I you understand. just would like to hold this and see what happens later on yes i okay motion to hold uh voting on this someone's got to keep track of that um is there a second a point of information yes alder johnson uh, in, in alder corporate sex i'm not sure if the intent is to evaluate council salaries but i'm just looking for a legal perspective on that um can we actually modify that? It's my understanding that you can only do it for a future elected session. Could we just get a clarification on that? that that's my understanding and Attorney Chavez can um, chime in as well. But my understanding is that you cannot change the salary until the start of the next term. So you can't change it midterm. Okay. okay. But the one thing we could do is decide not to allow health or dental. So we still could hold that because that would be a deduction. It's a small deduction, but we still could hold it if you wanted to, to look at that portion of it. It's up to you, Alder Dax, it's up to you, Corpus Dax. Yeah, it's up we can move, we can move on. We can vote on this one. Okay. To Motion to approve by Alder Johnson. Second. Is there a second? Second by Alder Galvin. Um, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Oppose, nay. Okay, motion carries, so the, the council budget is approved. All right, mayor's office, pages 19 and 20, or pages 24, 20, 24 through 29, right? 25, 20, 24, 25. 25. 24, 25, okay. All right. Any questions, comments on the office of the mayor? I'll entertain a motion to approve that portion. 
Motion to approve. Motion to approve by Alder Galvin. Is there a second? I'll second that. Any comments? Okay, all those so in favor? This, um, sorry. Yeah. Okay, go ahead, Alder Kirkstack. So as far as like, uh, so with, because I've had questions on um, the increase for, for the mayor's um, salary. Does this pertain to that as well? As far yes. as the law covers that. And so we are not to make any changes that this was decided before the last mayor was elected. So we cannot make it won't be until the next term that we could change that next term. We could change that. Yeah. Correct, and I, I can step in, and then maybe Director Falls can step in if we need to. But yes, it was the when it was uh, voted on, it was approved to have all three years um, step up. Um, there was a prearranged schedule on what the um, rate, rates would be and what the increases would be year over year, so that has been um, pre-approved. Oh, right. Something I, I look back on is I wish we would have bitten the bullet, made the raise completely that first year so that every year it doesn't look like we're giving the mayor a raise. There was a full raise approved. We tried to save the city some money and we tried to eke out that raise over four years, thus not giving the mayor the full amount that we wanted to as a council and saving the city money. And now each year it's going to come up. It's going to look like we're giving him a raise each year when in effect we saved the city money by not giving him the whole raise mm -hmm. and we should have given it to him, I think. Go ahead, right. Alder Galvin. And just just for a point of uh, historical fact, I think it was eight to twelve years since the mayor's had the mayor's office has had a raise, right? Uh, for for one reason or another, and it was felt that it was time, uh, with an election coming up, and a new mayor, whoever it would be, coming into office, that that person would get a raise because it was justifiable for the responsibility that that office bears. All right. Any other comments on the mayor's? I uh, entertain a motion to approve this. Did I already think I got one from Elder Galvin? Did I? Yes. Is there a second? I'll second that. All those in favor of approving this budget, part of the budget, say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. All right. The next part. You know what, Diane? I'm going to let you say the electronic part. I'm going to say the paper part. Administrative services, pages 29 and 30. And in the electronic version, it'd be 34 and 35. I have a question from Kathy Lefebvre. She wants to know what the meal allowance is for. It's on page 29 and it's line item 52011. Um, correct. Um, in the past years, we used to have all our individual um, departments within admin services separated, and we have now consolidated. This is, is for poll workers, and they get a $4 meal allowance for election day. So this whole meal allowance goes to the poll workers? Correct. Thank you. All right. Any other questions on the administrative services. Yes, Alder Johnson. Thank you, Chair. Um, Director Ellen Becker, just looking at a couple things. Uh, one, under equipment rental, could you explain, um, is that, what are we renting? Can you say the line item, please? Oh, sure, uh, 55 120. Um, one moment, please. Kind of drawing a blank on that line item. Mm -hmm. okay. Oh, it is election related for um, man, um, Director Manley, but if you give me one more minute, I'll look at details. Um, it is election equipment, um, chargebacks. Thank you. Any other questions on that, Alder Johnson? So I presume that that's a tangible expense that we are anticipating that, uh, you know, cause I'm looking at almost a 30% increase in that line. I, I mean, is that a, a like a new equipment rental that's not being addressed perhaps through the grant that we received this year? You're at the, it's, for the $1,200, is that what you're looking at? 
No, nope, it's twenty four thousand seven hundred and seventy dollars. Oh, I'm up one. Okay. Oh, I was looking at new equipment. Okay. Right. And, and in particular, what I'm looking at 2019 actual. I mean, we're almost double that price, and I'm just trying to figure out if there's something new that we're doing there that that necessitates that. Um, I apologize if you. I'm just looking it up. Of course, we're, we're, I mean, the question comes into play is with the, the grant that we did receive this year. I know that we purchased a number of things. Um, I do have some details from um, Clerk Teske, and it's really fees for the polling locations. It's, um, um, as you know, last year we bought express votes. Um, so that is, um, they now have come off warranty. So that is going to be paying for our express votes. It pays for our um, equipment of DS 200s. And now we also have a DS 450. So that is paying for our election equipment. So the newer ones that we have received in the last couple of years, the DS 450, we just got this year. There's an anticipation that we'll have some ad um, additional fees um, for equipment. Um, for rental might not be the right choice. It is just you know, um, equipment, um, but it's really to pay for the express votes, the DS 200s and the DS 450s. Do you think there will be any opportunity or will there be any surplus from the grant that we received this year that we might be able to apply it forward looking at some of those investments? Um, not, not typically, um, you know, that would have been for directly um, expenses related to this, um, to a, this election. These are ongoing annual costs um, that are being budgeted for next year. Um, the grant typically, I, like I said, I believe the grant was really designed to pay for expenses for this year. Fortunately, we were able to buy this DS450, which was around $61,000, $62,000 with the grant. This is just to pay for ongoing um, maintenance, um, a service, um, and then again, that's for um, some of the other equipment that we have. Okay. Um, two other line items in this one is, is maybe a little bit broader speaking too, 56302 cell phones. Um, I've noticed uh, a pretty significant budget increase on cell phones um, in, in multiple departments. Could you maybe shed some light on that? Are we changing our policy or? Um, actually in this case, I, I believe there were two additional phones that were added for elections. Uh, for the clerk's office um, election staff um, as they are we're, we're you know floating around um, mostly due to this year's election and it was really related to COVID um, because of having them off-site others are using their personal phones um, so two things it was a multi-purpose as um, as they were to, one person was um, expected to answer phones from home again this was able to give them a cell phone that was clerk related and then this also um is what we knew could be double up and give us more resources as we went into this busy election um between the um august and the um november election and in some cases we had a one year in some cases we have a one year uh, contract on them so we would have to keep them through um sometime next year and then reevaluate whether or not we could um, turn that phone back in okay uh, and then my last question for you, uh, 59003 tax adjustments. Could you just clarify, is that when we assess something, somebody appeals it and we have to we make a decision to forgive it? Is that essentially what that is? That's a portion of it. And then there's also um, on delinquent personal property, um, there are any, any, um, any small businesses that um, have um, closed um, in the, within the last year and a half to two years. I, I'm going to kind of look. Um, that's when we do a, we, we do a write off. And so in this, in these cases, these are delinquent, um, proper uh, delinquent taxes that we were, we were expecting to get in. And in some cases they have closed. Um, so we have to write those taxes off delinquent personal property taxes. Okay. So this is really just a guess based on historical data. Correct. And uh, historically year over year, we've been going, we've been budgeting 20 and you can see historically, it's getting closer to thirty to forty thousand, so we put a thirty thousand dollar line item in there. So this is the first year we've increased it over the twenty thousand um, for a while. Okay, and if, if we were to spend over that budgeted amount, would you go to contingency for that? Um, in some years, if it's over a period, um, a certain amount, but within the whole administrative department, and we haven't um, spent over our whole budget, in that case, I wouldn't have to go to. Con we hadn't been going to contingency. Um, okay, thank you. All right, anything additional on this? I'll entertain a motion to approve then. Administrative services. Motion by Alder Galvin. Did I hear you say something? Yeah. Motion to approve. All right, is there a second? 
Alder Corpus Dax, further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. All right. We are on to information technology pages 39 to 42. Which would be 44 to 46 on the electronic version. Are there any questions on information technology, pages 39 to 42? Alder Johnson. I hope I'm not the only one with questions. You guys are going to get sick of me in a hurry. Um, Director Veronic, if you could um, just shed some light for us, in particular looking at contractual services and software maintenance, significant increases in those areas. It, it, is this related to the shifting of things that was alluded to before? What, are you have a, a line item or no? Oh, yeah, I'm sorry, 53001 and 53020. Yes, that is correct. Uh, you'll see the, on the paper, on the electronic copy on page 39, you'll see that uh, that uh, software maintenance went up 100%, but on page 41, you'll see it went down 100%. So it is a shift. Yep, and I, I had that one highlighted too. So good, thank you. Sure. Anything else? Okay, seeing no other questions, I will entertain a motion to approve this section. Motion to approve. Second. Motion to approve by Alder Corpus Dax, second by Alder Galvin. Um, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Let's go to law, page 49. Yep, that's page 54 electronically. Yes. Um, anyone besides Alder Johnson? No? Okay, Alder Johnson. Go ahead. Hey, so, so one thing I just wanted to ask Attorney Shafez about, and I do have an amendment I want to offer to something else, but um, it was underneath the, um, the narrative uh, that you provided under records requests. We talked about a substantial increase in, in records requests, um, which obviously takes away from staff's time to perform other things. Could you just maybe talk about what's driving the increase in those, those requests? It's really just whatever happens to generate public interest at the, at the time. So we did receive a number of requests related to the election. Um, and then um, actually, Deputy City Attorney Bunger's on the line as well, so she can actually give you a pretty good explanation of what else has been, been, been the priorities. But I can tell you that the election took up a bunch of them. Okay, and, Attorney and, Bungert? and before Attorney Bungert answers, the reason I'm asking, should you wanna you know, shed light on this, I'm trying to determine if this is a one-time you know, blip in the radar or if this is a trend that we should be anticipating. I can, I can chime in on that. Good evening, everybody. Um, as far as for this particular year, um, yeah, I would, I, I would echo um, City Attorney Chavez's um, assessment that the spring election um, and the results of that election um, and the administration of that election spurred uh, a large amount of records requests, um, particularly with respect to email communications which tend to be time consuming um, simply because our searching capabilities are not um, not super advanced and super um, specific. Um, and so it requires a lot of uh, manual time to review, read, um, redact, um, or those records. Uh, so that was a huge influx. As far as anticipating how those requests will come in in future years or for the next year for that matter. It's difficult. Um, uh, a lot of it is driven by uh, issues that are coming before Common Council, issues that are being heard uh, by committees, things that are being picked up in the media. Um, and that is unfortunately something that's out of our control um, and not something that we can uh, readily anticipate. Um, it kind of goes in ebbs and flows. 
um, since I've started with the city and our increase or um, our number of records requests has increased steadily um, this year. I think in light of the pandemic um, and in light of, of major um, issues um, going on in the community, I think that kind of drove up the number of, of requests um, by not just individuals, but large um, community groups, advocate groups, law firms, um, things of that nature, watchdog groups. Um, whether we're gonna see something similar like that next year is, is hard to, to anticipate. I, I would actually say we would anticipate an increase next year as well, given that we are um, dealing with an election in November. Um, and so I would anticipate we're going to see a large number as well. And then we have litigation that has, in, has resulted in a number of um, records requests as well. So at least for 2021, I would anticipate that we're going to see an influx again. I have a question. I saw the Galvin. Um, it is, is either for Attorney Chavez or, or Bungard. Um, with the anticipation uh, of the police department obtaining body cams, um, has that been factored in that the amount of requests uh, that will result from that um, under the same uh, records request? I mean, is, is there any thought as to what that's going to cost us to have staff go through and redact the videos and the audios and, and everything else related to that? So that is partly, um, that will only partly affect our um, processes. That will primarily be handled by the PD. They do have their own records custodian. Um, we get pulled in to handle, or to assist, I should say, with PD's records when there is something that potentially needs assistance. Um, so I'll let Chief address that. Um, but for the most part, those are something that would happen at the police department level. And would this be a more appropriate discussion for bonding, or is this a discussion for right now? Uh, Diana, I cannot hear you. <laughs> Let's say it's for now because I think he's asking okay. whether or not they need more attorneys because of going whether or not they need more staff. attorneys. Okay, thank you. And yep, so I think um, the chief can explain what their record staff would have to do and what the new software they have will do for them. Uh, yes, Alders, uh, Andrew Smith here. Um, what I'm thinking is uh, we, we met with Appleton and we looked at them and kind of used them as a model for what it would take us. We're certainly gonna have uh, a, a lot of requests at the beginning and they said it tapers off. We're hoping that we can handle it with the staff that we currently have. We may have to uh, change some transcriptions, uh, job description or transcription positions to help with the redaction. We're seeing that maybe we have a little bit of wiggle room there in the transcription side. So we may have to reclassify some of those to um, redaction specialists. And Chief, if, if we do reclassify that, it probably means a reclassification of a salary increase. I would guess it would be a small salary increase, yes, sir. All right, thank you, sir. All right, yes, Alder Johnson. Um, thank you, Chair. Um, I'm looking at account 53021, legal expenses. Uh, and here's where I would like to offer a the proposed budget to increase that amount by three hundred thousand dollars to three thirty seven five hundred. I, I will second that motion. Yeah, and, and this is um, for the benefit of those watching, this is recognizing that we have a couple of uh, we may be engaged in, in the coming year that will require some some funding to address and one thing that I can, I can actually help with this number because I double check things at the, uh, direct, uh, the prompting of Director Ellen Becker, but the school district is currently share, cost sharing with us on one of the litigation items that we would use this for. Um, and so we anticipate that the number would actually be $80,000 less than I quoted. So it'd be 220 that we would need, not 300. Okay. Would you two, like to amend your motion? Yes, 220 is the number that I'm, I'm offering up. And I will um, second that. So it would be 220 additional, meaning a total of 257500 Yes. All right. Good job. Anything else? Okay, then we will... I will enter in motion to accept the inf the law budget as amended. Um, so Alder, what was that number again? 
I'm sorry. What was that number again that was just mentioned? Well, it's an additional $220,000. I think Alder Johnson has a total. What's the total again? 257? 257, 500. Right, okay. you'd add that on that line. Thank you. That's good, thank you. Okay, I'll entertain a motion to accept the law budget as amended. Motion to approve. Alder Johnson, do I hear a second from you? Did, I, I can't, you're like frozen, I think. Second, second, second. Okay, there you go. Now I got it. I thought you were speaking. I couldn't hear anything. Okay, um, Alder Johnson seconded it. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, motion carries. Right. Amended as amended and done of all of these. The next um, item is pages 54 and 55, the municipal court budget. Are there that any would be page questions? 59 and 60 electronically. Are there any questions on the municipal court budget? Move to approve. Motion to approve by Elder Johnson. Is there a second? I'll second it. Okay, unmute yourself, Alder, so that I can hear you say all those in favor. Say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. So municipal court is approved. Human resources, pages 62 and 63 in the book. 67, 68 electronically. Any, any questions? Um, I noticed that flex benefits uh, 51501 is down 100%. I, did that just probably move somewhere else? Yeah, that's correct. That got moved to the um, <clears throat> health fund. To the health fund. Okay. Director Ellen that's, Becker, that's correct, right? I couldn't figure out where it went, so thank you. Any other questions? Yes, Alder Johnson. Thank you. Director Faults, um, 53001 contractual services. Could you just uh, touch on what that is? Yeah, definitely. So that's used mainly for um, either legal services or it's used for maybe a consultant for strategic planning. Um, sometimes it may have to be um, um, team development for senior staff. I think it's also in there. And then also some coaching for employees that can be used for that as well. Are we, is this just kind of an estimate or are we planning a specific project? No. So I, yeah, thank you. So there's also one other item that I missed is um, arbitration as well. Um, for the most part, whenever we have legal services, the department that's using legal services pays for the bulk of that. But there are times where either um, HR will help out to the extent we can. And then also if we have our own legal questions about HR matters, we, talk, we use it for that as well. So I believe in like 2016, this was like 60,000 and then it got cut down to 20,000. So we've been using pretty close to 20,000 every single year. Um, and if you look at where we're at right now, projected I think is for 2020, we're at about 5,000, 6,000. Based on some of the legal invoices coming in, I know we're gonna be very close to 20,000. So, I mean, each year kind of fluctuates, um, but if we ever have to go to arbitration or anything like that, we can use those funds for that as well. Okay, and I believe we do have one contract we're negotiating next year, is that correct? Well, there's one ongoing right now, and then there's another, um, the transit mechanics is starting this year as well. Okay, so those expenses, if we have to go to arbitration, those expenses would likely be incurred next year? Yes, that's correct. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, any other questions or comments on human resources, pages 62 to 63? Seeing no hands, all those in, are, uh, I have an entertain a motion to approve. Motion. motion to approve by Elder Corpus Stacks. Is there a second? Second. Second by Elder Galvin. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, nay, motion carries. Community and economic development, pages 75 and 76. 
Electronically, that would be on page 80 and 81. Um, Alder Johnson, go ahead. Thank you. Uh, Director Rainier Wig. Um, so I have in my district been receiving an incredibly large volume of communications about rats. Um, and, and I know that I've talked uh, and, and at least have seen the numbers um, from your department about the number of complaints that the city's receiving, mm -hmm. but that doesn't you know, necessarily reflect um, what people are experiencing if they don't call your office. And so, um, you know, and, and the other thing that I'm thinking about is the report that Orkin put out, you know, which put us on a list, which is basically, I mean, it's based on the number of service calls they're getting. So there's some legitimacy to it in the sense that I don't like the list, but, but they are getting the service calls. And so one of the things that I would like to maybe float here, and, and I am looking to you for an a reaction, but I'm also like looking to you maybe for some advice on which account would make the most sense. I would I, I would like to propose that the city creates a matching grant program with specific details to be hammered out um, by your department, a matching grant program to contract professional services uh, for the eradication of rats. Um, so could I get, so, you know, the number that in my mind I was going to put out was $10,000. Um, I'm happy to put that in the form of a motion, but I'm also uh, willing to maybe have you respond to that first. Well, out of everything I studied in my budget, rats was not one of the things I thought would come up tonight. But I, I happened to, I, we just did some numbers on rats and you're right. People have not been calling in as often as, as they have in the past. So we, we're not aware of this influx of rat complaints. That being said, um, how we've done this in the past, of course, has been an education program, sweeps, neighborhood sweeps, enforcement, which helps knock that population down. If you wanted to do some type of a matching grant, I think the best, in my opinion, the best place for that money to come from would be probably neighborhood enhancement funds. Um, we have enough money in that account to set that up. And that certainly, I think, would qualify um, as an eligible expense using those dollars. So I would recommend it would come from enhancement funds. And Diana, is that, do you see any issues with that coming out of enhancement, a program like that? Um, right now, that money is bonded money. I'm not saying we couldn't do it. Um, it's just a consideration. Uh, we've either bonded for it or we have um, used state trust fund um, for that program. Um, with the expectation that we've done the last of our borrowing for neighborhood enhancements and that going forward, we would be using tax increment dollars closed for a housing program. So I, I just want to explain that's where the, that's the money for uh, funding sources for that. Um, I think that'd be okay. So if that's a qualifying expense, would it, would it make more sense to leave this out of the budget discussion and bring that as a separate item before the RDA? Right, because yeah. the, the neighborhood enhancements already been allocated Maybe. You Correct. Well, you know, the other thing we could do um, is it, it may qualify under block grant as well, under like neighborhood improvements. So um, it probably wouldn't be a bad idea to take it to RDA because those are some options. That and we it, could look I tell you what, but, okay, um, but I want to think about it before city council meeting, because obviously if I put it in the budget, then it secures its space if a majority of council mm -hmm. supports that. If I've got to go before RDA, I still don't have a guarantee. <laughs> so let me just think about that over the next week on how I'd like to uh, proceed with that. Elder Galvin. Thank you. And, and I mean, this whole thing about rats, um, a, a private company that makes money out of people being concerned about rats or an overpopulation of rats uh, puts out a report which generates more complaints, which generates more business for them. Uh, we spent, I think it was $5,000 mm -hmm. and the county matched that. There's still, from what I heard or read in the news, literally hundreds of unused rat traps sitting at the museum waiting for concerned people to come in and pick it up. Sometimes I wonder truly if some of these rats are really rats or people find some evidence of something. Um, someone says it must be rats and it's like social media. So I mean, we have a rat problem. When in reality, we, we don't. I mean, we, we have less calls. And I think uh, when we did have the uh, um, um, 
hysteria before about rats and the city went out and investigated uh, they found some concerns and i think they did a very good job of education and holding the property owners responsible for allowing uh, habitat to be maintained on their property that invited these rats to come and live within our community um I i'm concerned about spending thousands of dollars uh, for stuff that I think private homeowners should be taking care of themselves. And with the city's assistance and the fact that we have hundreds of rat traps available that have already been paid for by tax dollars, um, I'm really concerned about uh, this money being used then to hire private uh, companies to do this when we already have the staff, we have the processes, and we have the free rat traps to hand out to those that are concerned or if the city staff does find that there are issues within certain neighborhoods. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yes, Elder Johnson. Just a follow up comment to that because I, I did, um, you know, reach out about doing a neighborhood, which I believe is what our funding was intended to provide. And it sounds like um, because staffing is a little short, I was told that that's not something we were able to do right now. So, I, I mean, are we doing anything right now to address the complaints that are coming in? Do we have the resources to do that? I'm sorry, Alder Johnson, did you say neighborhood sweep? Yeah, so we, we did, I think, one, maybe two of those earlier this mm -hmm. year, or it might have been last year already. Right. Right. Work with uh, residents, do this, do that. When I checked with inspection staff, we had not received a large influx of rat issues. If we get a couple of rat complaints that are close together, we actually canvass that block as kind of an SOP to take a look at it right now. But as far as a larger area, we I don't believe we've done that this year, just based on the fact that we haven't had the huge number of complaints. Right, and I did make a request recently and unfortunately it wasn't something I was told that you had the staff to do right now. So again, I'm, I'm happy to take this out of the budget discussion today. Um, I'll revisit it perhaps with one of these other outlets. Uh, we, can, we can approach it that way. Okay, okay. we'll move on. Any other questions on this part? Alder Corpus Dax. For line item 51402, clothing allowance. So as of today, we've spent $101.65. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. And then we're looking to increase the budget for that 33%? Yes. So we do all of our clothing orders um, at the end of the year. So we've just placed that order for our standard inspection um, uniforms, or I should say um, logo shirts. So we'll be spending the, the normally budgeted amount. The reason that it's higher is because we actually added winter jackets this year. They have not had winter jackets um, since 2016. So we added the cost of um, winter jackets this year onto that budget, which is why there's an increase. Okay. I have a question from um, Kathy Lefebvre, Alder Lefebvre, on its line item 59008, Neighborhood Associations. Mm -hmm. And she is asking why it, it's going from zero to 5,000. Diana, can you help me with those numbers? We have drawn down, those are the Neighborhood Association mini grants. And I know that we've spent money with that mini grant program, so I don't think those zeros are. Oh, okay. Um, what, we did, what we did was there's normally $10,000 that is funded for neighborhood mini grants. And that's normally in a different portion of this budget. It's usually in miscellaneous expenses. Okay. And I think this year we decided to move it into the neighbor into our departments. Um, we have um, right now, um, I think we've got about $4,800 pending that'll go out the door this year. So we'll probably spend about 7,500 for those neighborhood mini grants. That being said, we know that associations are ramping down what they've been doing. Um, some of them, some of them haven't, some of them have. So we didn't feel the need would be there for the full 10. So we actually asked for five this year instead of 10. Um, and just to jump in, yes, um, all the expenses and, and it has typically been budgeted on page 133 in our miscellaneous budget. You know, at one point I talked to the director and said, it's a program they manage, it's a program they watch over, and for some reason, years ago, it was put in a miscellaneous budget. 
um, so I just asked if we get it moved out of miscellaneous and really put it in the department in which um, typically handles it. And so historically, again, if you jumped ahead, we'll see that when we get to that page, but last year they spent about 11,400. The last several years we've budgeted $10,000 to date. Um, when this book was ran, they had only spent $400, but as the director had just said, they're gonna spend about, she thought about 7,500 um, mm -hmm. and as it's coming down. So this year she's only asked for 5,000 for this line item. Again, it's just got moved really to put it into the appropriate department who manages this program and get it out of a miscellaneous budget. Okay. Elder Johnson? Does that give you the flex, I mean, does this commit levy dollars for that purpose or does that give you the flexibility to use block grant or neighborhood enhancement as well? This is levy dollars. Okay. If the council chose to, wanted to move that money to neighborhood enhancement, that would be a council decision, but um, block grant would be, would limit, it would limit the number of associations that could use it based on where they're located. Uh, right, and, that's, and I'm not looking to move it or modify it. I was just curious if it gave you some flexibility by bringing it under your department as opposed to the miscellaneous section of the budget. Okay. I think because it was in the budget, I would want some council uh, approval on that if you wanted to use enhancement, for example. All right, any more questions on community and economic development? Elder Dort, um, yes. I, I have a very small minor change I would like to request sure. this page. Um, okay. Um, on the very last line item on page 76 paper copy, there's a line item called 59940, um, transfer out. And I'm gonna explain it because I'm surprised nobody asked why did all of a sudden we had nothing and now we went up to $59,000. And so I wanna explain it and then I need to change that by $50. So um, okay. what, um, um, within this, this group, we also have the weights and measures group also falls within in um, this category. And per state statute, you have to, for the amount of revenue you need to bring in, um, you also should have the same amount of expenses or really your expenses, um, you should have your revenue should match your expenses. And within the expenses um, for weights and measures, there's some equipment and future equipment budgeted. Um, so we have the amount of revenue they have and then the amount of expenses. This balances out the um, remaining expenses to again, have revenues match expenses. And um, this, the reason why there's a change this year is um, it might've been there for a while, but in our state statute, it says that you need to, again, you um, really have to, you can't bring in more revenue than your expenses. So we had to show that the additional expenses we had to show in the book. And so that is what is creating this line item. Um, unfortunately, it should have been $59,481, not 431. We made a $50 mistake. Um, um, as we made some changes, we didn't um, calculate it correct. So I'm asking whether or not we could change the line to 59,041, which is, it does increase expenses by $50, but it does balance out our um, weights and measures division. Sure, so as um, when we, do, would, would someone like to make a motion to amend that line item? to increase it by $50. Or motion to amend. Motion to amend by, by um, Alder Galvin. I'll second it. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, That it, the budget is amend, amended. That line item is amended. Um, are there any other questions on this portion of the budget before we vote on the amended budget? All right. Um, all those in, uh, uh, I need a motion to approve the Community and Economic Development Budget. Motion to approve. Amended. Motion to approve amended. as amended by Elder Corpus Dax. I'll second that. Um, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Okay. Community and Economic Development is approved. Police Department, page pages 84 to 86. And electronically, Diana. The 89 and 91. Are there any questions? I believe I have one from, let me see. Okay, this is from Alder Lefebvre. Um The item is 50506 Packer Overtime. Uh, why is the request 397 that less than 
the 2019 actual? Um, I am seeing it, I see the actual at 563,000. Right, um, and then. And the revised budget at 20 is about 300,000. Um, our projection for this year, as you know, due to uh, no um, very little Packer season, um, is uh, much down closer to one um, one one fifty. That so, we understood. Yep, she understood that. Part. So one more time, what was her question? Well, she's asking why is the three why is it three ninety seven instead of five sixty three? But I I'm I'm thinking it's because of the January and February games possibly, but. Um, this is a line if you, um, when we talk about expenditure restraint, okay. we have modified this number to um, to uh, maximize our expenditure restraint, and we were able to maximize our expenditure restraint. We have um, modified this number, and I can explain why we do that, because um, all Packer overtime is 100% reimbursable. Reimbursed, right. So when you do ex your expenditure restraint, it's based on what you okay. budget um, so we want to budget out the uh, maximum. So what happens, whatever we do not budget for in the Packer overtime, it is 100% um, reimbursable. So anything that goes over the amount that's budgeted, at that point we do a budget amendment. And what happens is that it cre increases our expenses and our revenues. So we are using this line. And so we last year we were not able to, we had to reduce the Packer overtime line a little bit by a couple hundred thousand dollars to stay under expenditure restraint, but also maximize it. Um, and again, it is we have we have got approval and we have discussed this with our auditors. And in many cases, many municipalities do not even book like a Packer overtime um, because it is 100% reimbursable and they do a budget amendment. In this case, we want to maximize and show, because um, your expenditure restraint builds upon last year's number and then it builds upon your, so we want to be able to take all the capacity that we do have allowed through the state, through right. the um, state to maximize it. So um, that number did get reduced last year because of expenditure restraint. Right. But as you know, this year we will, obviously where our projection is way down because of the, the last right. couple of years. We, we understood that part. Um, and then my question for item 51399, I assume the pension, got, it got moved somewhere? That It's it's down 100%, that line. Why is that down 100%? Um, I'm going to start, and I might have to look at um, um, Assistant Manley. Um, that is a line item that um, it is from past um, – it, 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 it's for insurance for when there has been a somebody, an officer, or who has passed away, and in the line of duty, and we have paid their wife or their spouse in their spouse insurance. But now, years over years, we are there are less spouses still living that we still pay this additional um, insurance or this additional payment out. Um, so um, that has over time that number that has continued to reduce. So we no longer have an obligation on the police side. Okay, thank you. Other questions on the police department? Um, Alder Johnson, and then I'll go, well, you know what, let's give Alder Stoyer a chance. Let's just give him a turn. Really? Oh, All right, thanks. let's give Alder Stoyer a turn. First. Thank you, Chair. Okay. I, I, like, I like Alder Johnson. He's good. Um, no, I'm just going to ask a Chief on, uh, let's see, item 53001, Contractual Services. Just you know, just a little description of that, please. Yep. That's on page eighty-five of the hard copy. Yeah. I told him I said I can jump in and just start. Why Chief is looking at that line item? As you can see, it jumped up from four hundred sixty-three. It went up from thirty-two thousand up to four hundred sixty-three thousand, which is an increase of four hundred thirty-one thousand. And that is, um, there was just recently it got approved through personnel, and that was outsourcing our crossing guards. So if you look at, there's several line items that it affects. If you look at the second line on page 84 in your paper book, we have a seasonal salary of 372,000. That has gone down to zero. So there's a reduction of 372 in that line item from last year's budget. And then there is also fringes and wages, clothing allowance and some personal supplies that we're taking out of, out of several different line items and has been replaced with a crossing guard um, outsourcing of 431,000. Um, so it's really been, a, it was a switch, but I will then let the chief talk to you if you have any other additional specific questions on the crossing guard um, contract. Well, I think, you know, just, I just wanted to know if that was a wash. I mean, was there a much of a difference in monies on that or was it pretty close? 
I think it's going to be pretty close. And one of the things we're saving on is the uh, is the injured on duty. If we have one of these folks that's a crossing guard that gets injured on duty, the company is going to cover that instead of us. And we saw that on several occasions where someone would slip and fall or twist the knee, and we would be on the hook for their um, for their uh, injury yeah. and their workers' comp. And now that'll be on the uh, private company that we have. So I think it's a big win for us. Okay, that suffices. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Alder Johnson. Thank you, Alder Dorf. Uh, so Alder Stoyer actually alluded, I wanted to know where the um, where those salaries were, were located previously, and it sounds like they were under seasonal salaries, correct? Yes. Okay, um, good. Chief, could you, and I don't wanna to get too far into the weeds in terms of how you manage your budget, but do we still have that mounted patrol unit we do not have the mounted patrol unit. We eliminated that uh, about a year and a half ago and the horses have been sold. Okay, um, and then the other question that I have is related to the, to the boats. How many boats do we have within the department? I believe we have two, but Kevin Work, who's on the line, is in charge of our uh, Marine unit. Uh, he, he supervises that and I believe we have two, possibly three, but I'll, I'll toss it to Kevin and let him answer that. We have two boats assigned to the Marine unit. Um, they're both Zodiac. One was the Coast Guard vessel that we got for free and we're amortizing over five years. So we're getting about 70% of that money back um, from, the, from the DNR. Uh, we have a third boat uh, and that's assigned to the uh, dive team. And that boat's been in existence with the city for quite some years because that previous to that is the fire boat. So, um, and then we have like a small Zodiac, which is equivalent to like a rowboat and a floatable. Uh, but the essence is we have three boats. Okay. Um, okay, I appreciate that, that clarification. The, the other line item I just want to hit, 55105, radio maintenance contract, I presume this stands for. Um, that has seen obviously a very significant reduction. I just want to make sure that it's accurate and that we're not, you know, we missed a, that we didn't miss a zero or something. Could we maybe touch on why we saw such a reduction there? Yes, I can jump in there, Chief, and then you can add to it. Um, if you see, that just got moved to a different line item. Um, give me a moment. I should have had it highlighted before we get there. Um, it was moved to software maintenance. So there was, there, um, there, it wasn't, there is still a slight increase in software maintenance, but if you see last year's budget, there was zero and it went up to 255,000. So I'm sorry, so 53020 in the paper book of page 85, we'll cut in the middle of the page. There's an in, um, there was again nothing budgeted last year, and it went up to two hundred fifty-five thousand. The offset is on this page where we went down from two eighty down to twenty-four. Um, and again, the real real reason why um, radio maintenance contract these truly are all different software programs that the police department has, and then we're paying annual software maintenance contracts. Somewhere years and years and years ago, they just continued to use this radio maintenance contract line, and we really wanted to move um, software maintenance into the software maintenance line. So it really is a direct move, just try to be more clear and make sure that we're more consistent across all departments on which line item we're using. So truly software maintenance is in the truly soft, the software maintenance line. Radio maintenance contract is when we work internally and get, get service on our radio, um, police radios. Okay, thank you for that clarification. And very coincidentally, I also had that line highlighted. So <laughs> that's a question for me. Uh, and then just one final question on this particular budget. Um, 56303 data cards. Uh, this doesn't seem like something we've really budgeted for in the past. We had some expenses this year. What, it, what, it, what is that? I can start with that data card actually it's new um, and that is actually data card is really getting your I think it's like Wi-Fi in vehicles or I might actually have to turn it over to Mr. Heronic or maybe the Chief Smith knows about it but it's really it's getting um, cellular service to either radios or to some equipment. So data cards are they actually what you insert to again to have that access. I would throw it to Mike Heronic who's much more knowledgeable about uh, wireless software than I am. I'm sorry, could you repeat the question? Yeah, Mike, there was, um, I'm just looking at the, uh, we had some unbudgeted expense this year for data cards. And then of course we're budgeting for it now for next year. Just looking to get maybe some clarification on what, what it was for. Cell phones and maybe that's your increase. 
Those are the data cards that are in their um, mobile data terminals. And that's what how they transfer information back and forth between the records management system and the, car, and the CAD system. So is this something- for ISP for our squad cars. It's for our squad cars, sir, for cellular uh, uh, inside the squad car. Have, have we previously not had this service? I believe we have, and I think it was just buried in another line item. Um, unfortunately, I don't have that answer right now. I do believe that Richard Canis is on the line if we needed just to him to no. tell us what line it was in. Otherwise, I believe it was just, we, we just moved it, trying to be more, again, more transparent for whatever, for exactly what we were um, expensing. Okay, if we're just moving it, that's good enough for me, so. Okay. Yeah, to clarify everybody, this is Richard Canis. That was in the 55105 radio maintenance contract. Also. Okay. Again, just cleaning out an account that was really buried with a lot of things that really didn't belong. I mean, they really we wanted to make it more clear. So thank you, um, Rick, for explaining that. And that got also moved out of the radio maintenance line. All right, any other department? Okay, I'd like, uh, I'd entertain a motion to approve the police department portion of the budget. Motion to approve. Motion to approve by Alder Galvin. I'll second that. Further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. I'd like to propose that after we finish the fire department, we take a five minute break where we'd be about halfway through. Would that be all right? Yes, I'm seeing some nods. Okay. Fire departments, here we go. Pages 95 to 97. And in the electronic version, it'd be 100 and 102. Questions? Um, Alder Stoyer. Let me unmute here. Thank you, Chair. Uh, for Chief Litton, I had a chance to speak to him during the week, but I just, just wanted to clear perfect 50099 department turnover. Well, it's 21% decrease. I just was, just wanted a clarification on, on what that stood for. Um, if you want, I can certainly jump in, Chief, and then you can always add if you want. Um, as you know, the city of Green Bay, um, we, we try to budget more or less 100% of um, staffing needs, um, but we also understand and expect that there are going to be some vacancies. So there is a number that the city has chosen to budget for. This year, we are budgeting at $785,000. It's been as high as 1.3, which we know has been higher than we typically run for vacancies. This year's budget includes $785,000 in um, vacancies. Um, then at that point, we turn around and take an allocation and put something in each one of the departments to try to um, show some offsets and some vacancies that we would expect. It's a budgeted exp um, number. Some departments, some years have a higher number than what um, is projected. Some is lower. But um, so what happens is you are seeing a reduction in the um, fire department is because a little bit about a change in the allocation the way we did it last year, but we also had a change in the um, the reduction in the amount of turnover that we budgeted. So Diana, is that a an over, overall city uh, number, so so to speak, and it's divvied up accordingly to the various departments? Correct, because knowing that we do budget 100% and you do have some vacancies, it it is um, just a way to um, again to. Um, uh, just, you know, over time, that number has just been built in to try to make a budgetic number. Every year we do show, um, we do try to calculate it um, in the through an Excel spreadsheet. We do calculate and then we do show anywhere from a half a million to well over a million dollars annually of savings based on open days, open positions. So that is a true number. And over time, we continue to have budgeted it. And like I said, fortunately, we were able to bring that number down from what was um, somewhat of an unrealistic 1.3 million to closer to a $785,000 uh, anticipation of open positions. Okay. But it is overall for all all of the general fund we have an L each department takes a small allocation of that number. Okay, thank you for that. Um, one other line item, uh, 51212, which is workers comp compensation, I guess. Just checking why, you know, just a clarification on why the reduction. Alder Stoyer, you know, every year um, uh, the uh, folks in the risk department within uh, human uh, resources uh, looks back. Our, our rates are based on a three year averaging, I guess, of looking back. And um, because we've had some fairly good years over the last three years, 
um, our rate is being reduced by our carrier. Okay. Um, and I, I would like to tap onto that. Overall, um, we take the total expenditures for workers' comp. Um, our, our safety manager, um, Nate Fromming, helps pull this one together. But overall, in the whole budget, we did reduce workers' comp expense by 45000 um, based on premiums, based on expected claims. Um, but as you see in the fire department is actually probably experienced really the, the bulk of the reduction. Um, but as the chief said, we overall reduced 45,000 and then we allocate it over the departments and the departments are based on a three year average or four year average of claims. <coughs> and because the fire department has had less claims in the last four years on average, um, they did experience a pretty large reduction. But overall, general fund wise, we did reduce it 45,000. No, I, I haven't looked at the last year's budgets or, or so, you know, I have, but as far as uh, Chief Litton, has it kind of trended downward as far as uh, claims in your department? Yeah, you know, a lot of that's luck of the draw. I, I'll just yeah. say that, you know, we have made a focused effort of, uh, with our safety committee and uh, learning okay. injuries. Uh, you know, we, we do a review of every single injury um, that, that occurs on a job. Um, it's reviewed by the safety committee. Um, we make recommendations then that's shared with the entire department. Uh, just in order to, you know, try to bring it, put it in everybody's mind that, hey, this this, this happened, this is how it happened, and, and in order to put it in the future. And so I think that's been successful over, you know, the last seven or eight years, actually. Okay. Well, good. Thank you for that. I, I just want to make one comment, too. You know, the, the fire position that's being asked to be added is about 81,000. At least it's about 172,000. So total, it's about 254 which I figured out to be one-fifth of one percent, you know, of the total budget. So unless I'm wrong, I just thought I'd throw that in there. So, cause I know that we're always talking about, you know, positions and such. So I don't know, I'm, I'm pretty good with that unless anybody else can change my thought on that. That's all I've got, thank you. Okay, any other questions about fire? Alder Dorf, can I just make one comment? Oh yes, it's Chief Litton, go ahead. I just want to point out to uh, all the elected officials and the public that are that are watching. If you look at our, if you look at the printed copy, page ninety-one of our table of organization, um, you know, it shows that we've got, you know, we're going to have one hundred ninety-three personnel, and that that's what everybody really focuses on. I think really what you need to also be aware of is if you look at station eight, that is our contract with the village of Alloway, and so we have twenty-one people assigned to the village of Alloway. Uh, and that generates $1.9 million in revenue. So that's really, that, you know, that part of it, um, you know, when you're looking at the 193 number, that's really not accurate. It's 21 of those people are assigned to Alloway. Um, and, you know, I just wanna make sure that everybody understands that, you know, we do have, uh, you know, the potential of, you know, an additional merger here coming up and there's, there's confidential information out there that all the elders have received that I do not wanna speak to tonight, um, but we'll certainly be taking it up uh, ho hopefully in, uh, on the 10th. So. Um, I just wanted to point that out. Um, we're actually, uh, if you look at that, if you go back and look at our budget books and what we were authorized for and what we actually had in our budgets in both 2019 and 2018, um, we had 24 people assigned to that station. So we actually had a three person reduction there. Um, and if you look at station uh, two, uh, which is kind of in the middle of the page, there's only 17 firefighters assigned there now. There used to be 18 there. So t totally the work even with adding the one, we're down still four positions um, that we were at one point authorized for. And that was a result of um, staffing the ambulance at station seven, um, which I worked very hard over a period of three years to get it staffed. So um, I just wanna make that point. Um, we're good with adding the one person. We, we hope that we, we think that it's necessary. Um, it does help to reduce overtime. It does with all of our special events and things that we do, um, it becomes uh, a little bit of a stressor on our personnel with having to work so much overtime to keep, keep the shifts filled uh, for minimum manning and to you know keep up with all the special events that go on in the city. So I just wanted to make that point. Thank you. Um, if there's no other comments from the committee, I will entertain a motion to approve the fire department budget. Alder Johnson, Alder Corpus Dax, Alder Galvin, somebody want to make a motion to approve the fire department approve. budget? One more question, Alder Dorf. All right, go ahead, Alder Johnson. Sorry, uh, Chief Litton, notice a substantial increase uh, in cell phones. Could you just touch on that? Yes, sir. We are we are moving into the uh, 20th century. Um, <laughs> we had we had flip phones in a lot of uh, our apparatus out there, and because of protocols and things with the hospitals 
and reporting nature needing to be able to take pictures and, and then send those reports and send those pictures in uh, on accident scenes, for instance, to the emergency room doctors and so forth. We are upgrading to smartphones and all the vehicles. Uh, the cost of the phones is not not prohibitive. It's 99 cents for the phones uh, through the package. Uh, it's the data package that actually is, is causing that increase. Uh, one other area of increase there will be, uh, you already know, talked about it in the police department, uh, with, it, with the change to the new CAD system, uh, the county's changing to a new CAD system and going up live next week, um, we have to install uh, what's called a modem in, in all of our uh, apparatus to make our uh, computer aided, uh, our, our computers, our mobile data terminals in the, in the vehicles actually communicate with the county. So there is some increase in that to make that happen very, right after the start of the year in, in uh, 2021 as well. Okay, so this is more of a long-term permanent change where we could expect this year in and year out. That is correct. Okay. Yeah, we don't assign a phone to each personnel. They're assigned to apparatus. So it's a little different than some of the other operations in the city. Okay. So was there a motion to approve? Yeah, I, I, oh, by yeah, Elder Galvin? Okay, is there a second? Second. Second by Elder Corpus Dex. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. So we've, oh, we, and we didn't change anything. So we've approved this budget as stated. So now, how about, would you guys want uh, five minutes, seven minutes, 10 minutes? What do you want? Yeah, five? Uh, All right, well, let's well, come back here. Let's split the difference and come back here at 6.05. It is now 5.58 on my computer. We'll be back here. Yes. I've, yes. Got, I've got a six o'clock plan commission item that I have to go to. So I, I'll probably be out for a while, but I'll try to get back in. Okay. I'm right. So do I need a motion to have for a recess? Do we need a motion? Or can we just, can I just decide? Yeah, I think um, so. I'm deciding. We're done until five after six. See you back here in five minutes. Alder, Alder Stoyer, I, let me look it up, but the plan, um, the, there was discussion that the plan commission meeting was going to be moved. You're saying there is an agenda? Um, yeah, there's an oh, agenda. Okay. There's still meeting yeah, today. I mean, I've got, I've got okay. issues on, on that button on that as well, so. Okay, um, Alder, I... um, thank you. Um, there really, when we talked about it weeks ago, there was, there was discussion of having it moved, so um, that didn't happen. So thank you, Alder. Okay. All right. So we are all set on our end and we are recording right now. We are, is everybody back? I don't think so, but just want to let everyone know. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, almost, almost, we just need Alder Galvin. He's just getting his milk. He'll be back in a minute. Alder Galvin, are you there? It's the only one we need. Oh. Yay. So I um, am going to read a statement that I'm really not sure where to throw this in, but Alder Weary had another statement he wanted me to make, and I'm, I think I'll just throw it in right now. We're midway through. Um, from Alder Weary. This is such a harsh year for everyone in our country. I believe it is grossly inappropriate to ask our citizens who are suffering financially to pay more. I am not convinced we turned over every rock in order to avoid a 3% increase next year after we had a 3% increase this year. Alderweary further states, many companies implemented furloughs to avoid layoffs. Why have we not explored this? Many had to lay off workers. I'm not suggesting we I don't know what he means. He has DOP, but I, or maybe do. I'm not suggesting we do this, but suffering residents who pay our wages must shake their heads at our oh well in quotes attitude. He finally, he ends with, we ask the people of Green Bay to tighten their belt and hang in there. 
yet are not willing to do so ourselves, sharpen those pencils and make some tough choices. Okay, I just wanted to make sure I did my due diligence with reading Alder Weary's comment. All right, Department of Public Works. That is on pages 105 to 112. And if you're looking at the electronic version, that'd be pages 110 through 117. Right. Well, at least Vanessa didn't. Um, what? Does anybody, okay, questions on um, the Department of Public Work? Alder oh, Johnson. Looks shocked. <laughs> I, I can't believe it. Okay. Uh, Director Grenier, just a couple questions for you. One is uh, page 107. We have uh, line 50501 over time. Um, we're looking at uh, a 33% increase on overtime. Could you just touch on that for us? Absolutely, that's the way we've been trending lately. So we're deciding to try to budget for it rather than overrun our budget. Where does, where does, uh, which staff is incurring the overtime? What services are, are is that for? Uh, primarily that's snow plowing. If you go back and look at the 2019 actual, we were at 546, 508. Okay. And we, had, we had budgeted 300 that year. So snow really anchored, anchored the bulk of that? That is correct. And based on long-term projections, we're anticipating winter to start earlier and last longer this year. Nobody heard what you said. <laughs> oh. Okay, thank you for that explanation. Um, page 108, item 53011. It was alluded to, uh, or I saw, I think, in the in the mayor's presentation that there was gonna be an increase in uh, landfill monitoring. Yes. Could, could you just uh, explain that? Is that something that's being required by somebody else? I thought I read that somewhere. Department of Natural Resources, yeah. Yes. A number of closed landfills, uh, some of them were city owned facilities. Uh, one of them was actually owned by a paper company. That's the H&R landfill, which also happens to be known as the Finger Road Ball Diamond Complex. Um, with some of the initiatives that we've been taking on <clears throat> with outside groups, um, some of the, the lower bay, we've been talking at Parks and INS Committee uh, about some of the initiatives that that Lower Bay Group has been looking at um, with the Ken Ewers Nature Area, uh, the Optimist Club doing some work over at the H&R Landfill. Uh, those historic fill areas which have sat basically unchanged with their monitoring over many, many years, now that we're looking at doing some additional work and trying to uh, not let it be an eyesore on the periphery of the community, but rather turn it into a valuable asset uh, that can be used for recreational purposes. That has caused DNR to go back and take a look at what the long-term monitoring <laughs> on the facilities are and has caused the cost for that monitoring to go up. <clears throat> so when I'm looking at 2019 actual, the actual still exceeded what we're budgeting for in this coming year. Was there something in 2019 that drove that up or did we just budget to reduce the monitoring in 2020? Uh, no, in 2019, we actually had some um, consent order stuff that we were finishing up with the DNR, especially at the H&R facility. So there were a number of uh, monitoring points that had been lost or destroyed over time, uh, specifically as they related uh, more so over towards the golf course area, uh, towards the woods. So there was a one-time uptick uh, in 2019 to help uh, bring those costs up. And again, we're just starting to uh, to budget what the actual costs are out here at the at the we're starting to utilize them more. Okay, thank you for that clarification. Um, items. 54061 and 54064, blacktop and the joint ceiling. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe these were the items that we removed last year and opted instead to use wheel tax funding for. Is this for like repairing of potholes? That is correct. Okay. 
And uh, if I, again, if I'm not mistaken, I believe that number was 231,000 ish. Um, okay. Is that kind of what you're planning on again for this year? And if so, where does that expense get long now with the wheel tax covering that? That is correct. That is the intent. Um, when we bring forward discussion on the capital improvement program, that's typically where that discussion is held. Okay, that makes sense. Thank you. Um, is, are these numbers, I'm just looking at the actuals from 2019. I mean, they're pretty kind of like, you know, like 50-50, they're pretty close. Is that normally the trend on that? Uh, Yes and no, it, it varies from year to year. The joint ceiling materials is on concrete streets and the blacktop materials. Uh, blacktop materials has been a little bit misunderstood even by my own staff over the past several years. Uh, there's two components to the blacktop. There's what we're doing for routine maintenance programming uh, ourselves. And then there's also the staff had been utilizing some of that money uh, to purchase the asphalt that's used for utility cuts. So if Wisconsin Public Service does a gas upgrade on a, on a residential street and we have to go back in there and patch that trench, uh, some of that material was being counted in here, but we weren't necessarily recovering the, the revenue. And we've changed that again. Uh, as Director Ellenbecker has mentioned multiple times already tonight, as far as making more accurate cost-centered accounting, we've been taking some uh, some pretty significant effort over the last couple of years to make sure we're tracking that a lot more closely. So uh, I had a request from Alder Burnett late last week asking about the wheel tax fund. Um, so when I responded to him, I showed that the actual expenditures for blacktop materials was significantly higher than what we had anticipated, but there was an offsetting revenue from when we had billed that back to the Wisconsin Public Services of the world uh, and got that revenue tracked back into the wheel tax fund as well. Okay, so here, here's why I'm asking the question and it's a motion I'm going to make. Um, when we took that 231,000 out, city council uh, approved that in last year's budget. I did not believe that that was in the spirit of why we passed the wheel tax. When we passed the wheel tax, to me, the intent was that we were going to expand the program and not use the wheel tax as a way to subsidize budget shortfalls. And so the, the motion that, that I'm going to make, and Director Grenier, I'm looking to you maybe for a little bit of, of guidance here, because I'm going to include two account numbers within this motion, the 54061 and the 54064. The motion I'm going to make is that we add $231,000 to those two accounts. The, the, the guidance that I'm looking for, Director Grenier, is what would be the appropriate way to split those up? I believe what we would be looking at is 54061 at 141 and 54064 at 90. Could you just restate those numbers again? 101 5503-54061 would be at 141,000. 101-503-54064 would be at 90,000. Okay. That is my motion is to add those amounts to those respective accounts. Is there a second? I'm hearing no second. Yep, and I anticipated that, and I'll be reintroducing that motion again at the full council. And I will be adding my discussion at the full council then, since we can't discuss discuss a non-motion. So thank you. Okay. Anything else, Director or uh, Ryan Alder no, Johnson? No, and nothing. Anything else for from anyone for Public Works? <clears throat> No. Um, I will entertain a motion to approve the public works budget. 
I'll make that motion to approve the public works budget. I need a second. Second. Second by Alder Galvin. All those in favor, say aye. 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 And opposed? Did you vote Alder Johnson or not? Oh yeah. Uh, it's... You voted aye? It's fine. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. Um, that, that motion carries and that budget is approved. All right. Uh, parks, rec, forestry, and equipment replacement pages 125 to 128. Okay. Um, any, any questions for parks and rec? For the parks and rec budget? I guess I, I will ask a question. Um, line item um, 54003. It, it's not a huge number um, for total money, but th the housekeeping supplies went up 53%. So are we going to clean more bathrooms? this coming year or what's what's happening director Ditchite? yeah so all of that uh is for city hall housekeeping uh so oh. we have to purchase more chemicals uh, more supplies due to covid um, i will okay. tell you though uh that uh there was an error in that one line item and we really only need five thousand dollars not eight thousand dollars so if you would like to cut three thousand out of the budget you could you know, it says twenty three thousand. So I was, so. It is eight thousand oh, over right. last year. Mm -hmm. Do you see it, Pam? Okay. So what's my total number supposed to be? Twenty thousand. Twenty thousand. Got it. So we are cutting out five thousand, right? Or three thousand. Three thousand. Three thousand. Three thousand. Three thousand. Three thousand. Minus three thousand. Okay, um, I will entertain a motion to approve that line item change. Motion to approve. Um, motion to approve by, I think it was Alder Corpus Jack, second by Alder Galvin. All those in favor of making that change, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, good. We just saved $3,000. Great. Alder Johnson. Thank you. Uh, Director Ditch, I, I'm looking at <laughs> F111. Zero. I the line the, the description is cut off, but I believe it's unemployment compensation. Do you repeat the item again because you cut out a little bit. Sure. The number uh, five one 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 zero. Okay. Oh, so that would be unemployment compensation. Um, typically, that line item is given to us from the finance department uh, for calculation. And correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, isn't that based off of the previous few years uh, when that's all calculated? I don't know how many years you go up, you go back though. When I, I don't recall seeing that in the other department budgets, which is why it caught my attention, unless I totally missed them. In some cases, um, there's other departments that have a few um, few dollars. Um, oh, yeah, okay, I'm seeing what, it now. Yeah, what I am guessing though is um, there were some employees this summer um, that did not get, get come back to work mm -hmm. because of the COVID. And so I'm, I'm expecting that is why we have a projection of $22,000 um, this year. Sure. So is that an expectation that we're going to see an increase in our rate and this is the rate being passed on to the department? No, this, this is when we actually pay out for somebody who was an employee that didn't get called back to work work their job and so we actually pay help pay a portion of the unemployment or pay their unemployment until they do find another position. Does that work differently in government than in the uh, the private sector? I'm I'm, I'm hearing um, um, Director Manley say yes. 
so I don't have the, all the answers. I don't know of other director falls if you're um, aware of how that all works. Well, and the reason I asked the question, right? You have a pool of money, and it goes out of the pool. They adjust your rate then the following year, up or down, depending on how many claims you had against the pool. So that's why this one just. I'm not familiar with unemployment working that way, and that's why I was kind of asking the question if the city actually contributes directly to that and doesn't have the advantage of a rate or a pool. You are, you are correct, Alder Johnson. We do not have a rate, so we don't have to pay a, a flat amount all the time. We just pay when our employees or former employees actually claim unemployment, and then we pay that dollar amount. So it could also be that these summer employees who worked for us um, now we've got a full-time job during the year, but now they're claiming unemployment. Well, we claim as, or the city is one of their former employers, right? So we end up paying a percentage in at that point, but we don't have a flat rate like um, other businesses do. Governments are an exception. We can learn something new every day. Thank you for that explanation. And if, can I jump in and remember, this summer there was that extra bonus on um, unemployment, the extra $600 that employees received. So that is why you're also seeing a, an increase in the projection here. More and more people who might have had a part-time job in the past, all of a sudden now aren't, were unemployed this summer so that they could get that extra 600. Now we're still paying a portion of that unemployment as we, again, as um, director had said, um, because they were a former employee of ours. Okay. We did have a few employees this year that did claim unemployment because they had to be uh, taken off of work for COVID reasons. There just wasn't the work for them. This mostly affects you know any of the STEM departments that have seasonal part-time employees. We don't typically see this much in our full-time employee positions. Okay, and in our end, it was the seasonal positions. It was not the full-time positions. Okay. Uh, questions. Director Dishine, 54072. It is on page 127, labeled concessions. Can I make an assumption that that is the cost of goods sold for concessions at Bay Beach or elsewhere? Uh, this would not be for uh, Bay Beach. Can you repeat the line item? Yep, 54072. 72, okay, so that would be uh, more for the pools. Uh, Bay Beach has their own line items. Okay. Um, I don't, I think it's strictly for the pools. Sure. So, so this is cost of goods sold on, on whatever it is, concessions that we're selling. Correct. And then we make it up in revenues uh, by selling it. So and you'll see an offset here. in our revenue uh, line items. Okay. And the reason I wanted to at least touch on this, and the same question would apply to Bay Beach, and I can skip it later. Um, but, it, I mean, we're looking at roughly, I mean, the same, are we, are we projecting, I guess, to be at full capacity next summer? We are projecting full capacities for all of our recreation programming uh, because if we don't put it in our budget, we can't run the programs accordingly. So um, we did budget for a full season for all of the pools and as though we had a standard season for recreation. Okay, and, and I just wanted to confirm that, so I appreciate that clarity. Um, okay, th I think that's all I've got right now. Keep in mind that most of our programs run in the summer months. So we have a few months early in the year that hopefully the COVID will play out over those first few months. Obviously, we don't know if that's the case or not, but uh, most of our expenses are in the summer months. Sure. All right, other questions for Parks, Rec, and Forestry? Um, Okay, so seeing none, I will entertain a motion. Alder Dorf, I just have one, one question I'm looking for sure. clarity on. Um, Dan, I'm looking at your our director edition, I'm looking at the positions, and I noticed that we have two park rangers for the wildlife sanctuary underneath the parks area as opposed to the wildlife sanctuary area. Correct. So those are considered admin positions. Uh, so that's why they're under the parks and not the wildlife sanctuary. So um, that is how it was set up. Uh, initially, uh, those positions were kind of uh, run through our, our parks um, crews, uh, but they've kind of merged into their own uh, wildlife sanctuary positions. But yes, they are still under that. So those two positions are full-time dedicated to the wildlife sanctuary? 
Yes, they are. And the parks department is kind of picking up the tab as opposed to having it allocated to the wildlife sanctuary cost budget. Correct. Right now, those positions are under, um, like I said, those are under the uh, park tab. Come to, uh, but it would just be an offset cost. There would yeah, be no I know that. It just, uh, it, it, to me, it seems interesting because if you're trying to get a true snapshot of how the wildlife sanctuary is performing, you, you know, on the cost end, I mean, you'd have to dig into another another category to figure that out. The, the reason that uh, they were put under parks is because they are more of a maintenance type position. Uh, so they, we do oftentimes at the sanctuary, call the park shop and, and request assistance with maintenance, et cetera. So all up that way that they were part of parks and not the wildlife sanctuary. Okay, thank you. Yep. So we have amended this budget by $3,000. Is there a motion to approve the Parks, Recreation, Forestry budget as amended? Motion. Motion by Alder Galvin. Second. Second by Alder Corcus-Dax. Discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Okay. We are on page 133, miscellaneous. Um, who wants to talk about that? Uh, well, first of all, are there questions about miscellaneous? Are there any questions? Motion to approve. Motion to approve by Alder Johnson. Second. Second by Alder Galvin. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Motion carries. We're done with miscellaneous. General fund total, or I'm sorry, we're skipping that. Uh, page 143 to 145, sanitary sewer. On the electronic document, that would be 148 to 150. Okay, are there any um, questions about the sanitary sewer portion of the budget? Um, yes, Alder Johnson. Uh, Director Grenier, I'm looking at um, two accounts in particular, 53001 contractual services. Um, that got quite a bump to 150,000. Is there particular projects that are being worked on there? Yes. Um, one of the things that we have to worry about with sanitary sewer that we don't have to worry about with storm sewer is a phenomenon that's called uh, in, inflow and infiltration, or we refer to it as I and I in the industry. Uh, the reason that you don't want I and I, you don't want clear water, groundwater mm -hmm. leaking into your sanitary because that goes off to the treatment plant and then you're treating clean water. I and I is a, is a concern for everybody. Uh, we are hiring, the anticipation is to hire a consultant to begin the modeling with the I and I within the, uh, the city system. Okay, so I presume that that's a, a problem that's currently present? Yes, has been for some time. Okay, and this would, would, would this expense get covered by stormwater fees as well? No. So, so sanitation is part of the levy? No. Or the general fund? No, no, this is the sanitary sewer fund. So when you pay your, when you pay your water bill, it's water, sanitary, and storm is all in the same bill. Yep, copy that. Uh, I'm following you now. Okay. Uh, and then 53112, we have $2 million to sewer service cutoff. <laughs> it's like rate adjustment? No, nope, rate stabilization fund. Rate stabilization fund. Okay, got it. I, I just wasn't sure exactly what that was. I'm good. Thank you. Any other questions about um, the sanitary sewer? I'll entertain a motion to. To approve sanitary source. So moved. As present. moved by Alder Johnson. I'll second that. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, so then we're up to uh, pages 147 to 149, the parking division. 153, 154 in the electronic version. Any questions about parking? 
Yes, Alder Johnson. Just oh, I'm sorry, Alder Corpus Dax first. <laughs> then Alder Johnson, <laughs> sorry. Uh, line item 5308 credit card fees, 246% increase. I'm not, I didn't hear what you s said, but. 53038 three, yes, credit card with, fees. Uh, there's like a 346% increase there. Yeah. Well, if you look at the 2020 actual to date, we're at over 209,000 with our park system, parks, P-A-R-C-S, Parking Access and Revenue Control System. So that's the system that operates not only the ramps, but also paying uh, in our surface lots, anything except for the passport app. Um, uh, I shouldn't call I should qualify that. Passport also charges us some service fees. Plus, not only the parking access and revenue control system, but when people are paying parking citations or the like, um, we get assessed credit card fees and it's just that's the trend we're seeing is less and less people carrying cash more and more people wanting to pay with credit cards and we either got to pass those those fees along or include them in our budget as a as, as a line item okay and then five five one one two meter maintenance a 78 percent increase that's you can see that uh we were at 11,800 a couple of years ago in 2020. We dropped that down to about, well, we had a revised budget of 11,800. Uh, we're anticipated mm -hmm. to come in at about 99, but do some major maintenance on the interior workings. The, the housings themselves uh, last for a long time, but the mechanical pieces inside need to be updated. And this is one of the years that we're anticipating quite a few of them are due up in their rotation. Okay. Anything else, Alder Corpus Dex? I don't think so. Okay, Alder Johnson. Thank you. Um, Alder Corpus Dex kind of touched on this one too, but I want to go back to the credit card fees for a second. And I, and I do appreciate that, that explanation. Um, you know, it was my understanding that, uh, that parking was down this year. So it strikes me as an interesting correlation that the fees are up. Um, and you know, if it, I don't know what percentage we pay and that's why I'm curious if there's more in this account than just credit card fees, you know, but if, but a normal credit card fee would hover probably right around 3%, I would think you know, a city the size of Green Bay could negotiate even a more favorable rate. But if you're looking at, you know, $30,000 on a million dollars of transactions, right, that, that would suggest to me that you're at how many, how many? I can, I can speak to this. million dollars of transactions? A, a large, a large portion of this, yeah, isn't just credit card fees, it's the passport parking fees. So um, we pay a certain cost per ticket that's issued automatically to passport. We do pay merchant service fees, which is like your credit card fee. Um, we also pay a gateway fee, an escalation fee, a harvester fee, a letter sent fee, and then an additional fee per every transaction that they process. So there's a lot of, I guess it's hard to split it out between what's a contractual fee and what's the credit card fee. And so it's all been lumped into the one account. So okay. um, it, it's, that's it's a, just that's a labeling good. of it, yeah. Um, so if when we do passport though, they we pass on those fees, right? Can't hear not you. entirely. No, not necessarily? Not entirely. We've Alder Johnson, our... for some reason, we can't hear you. Can you hear? Okay. I can hear. Okay, we're good. We have set our parking rates but the parking rates aren't necessarily 100% correlated to what passport charges. Okay. Okay, that's all I've got right now. Thank, thanks for the detail. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Anything else for the uh, parking division? I'll entertain, a mo uh, do you have, I'll entertain a motion to approve. Motion to approve. Motion to approve by Elder Corpus Dax. Okay. I'll second that. All those in favor of approving this part of the budget, say aye. 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 Opposed? 
Motion carries. All right. So parking, we're on to storm sore 151 to 155. Um, questions on the storm sore budget. Um, line item five two zero zero one training increase of fifty seven point two percent. We have uh, a couple of engineers on staff that we didn't have. Uh, we've added positions to the table of organization. Plus, we've we're, uh, we've added the fog, oil, and grease inspector. So those for continuing education requirements do also have uh, additional training and travel that we didn't have previously. Okay. And then five three zero zero one contractual services service uh, increase of 100%. What are those contractual services? That's basin studies for stormwater issues. So uh, for instance, the consultants that we have hired in the past to take a look at the flooding issues down at Mason and Maine, the consultant that we currently have engaged uh, taking a look at issues out uh, in, along the East Shore Drive. Uh, consultants that we have brought on to take a look at uh, assistance with helping us um, with the design of the repairs out on the, uh, out on the dike along the South Shore of the Bay. As we see the number of studies we've got out there and the things that we have yet to get done, we're adjusting those uh, those consultant fees accordingly. Thank you. Any any other questions? Um. All right. We'll entertain a motion to approve the storm sewer pages budget. Motion to approve. Motion okay. approved by Alder Galvin, second by Alder Corpus Dex. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Yes. Okay, we are on transit, pages 160, 161. And that would be page 165, 166 if you're in the electronic version. Questions on the transit department. Patty. Uh, looks good to me. Anybody else? I will move to approve that budget. Second. Second by Elder Johnson. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Patty. That was the fastest one. Thank you. All right. We're going I was down. very glad for that. <laughs> good. Um, oh, I can't move this. Okay. Bay Beach, page 168, 171. Okay, Bay Beach. And what is that electronically, Bay Beach? Um, that would be 173 through 176. Okay. Questions on Bay Beach budget? I have none. All right, hearing none, seeing none, I'll entertain a motion to approve. Motion to approve. Motion to approve this budget. Second. Is there a second? A second by Alder Corpus Jacks. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, debt service, page, pages 173, 174. Electronic version 178, 179. Any questions on the debt service? Ages. Yes, Alder Johnson. Uh, Director Allen Becker, if, if I'm reading this correctly, um, essentially we're going to retire $19.7 million of debt this year. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. 
Um, with interest, correct. It's a little over 13 million of in principal and then about 6 million of interest. Yes, correct. And that is what yeah, makes up the $19.7 million. Okay, so, so when we take a look at the city's overall debt, the, 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 we're only gonna be reducing it in 2021 by the principal amount then, is that correct? Yes. Okay, thank you. I, just to take in again, this is all jet debt. This is an, isn't all just general levy. This would be sanitary storm, baby H, TIF, and also anything that's supported by general levy. Any other questions on debt service? Hearing no. none, I'll entertain a motion, I think. Motion to approve. Motion to approve by Elder Galvin. I'll second that one. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. We will move on to neighborhood enhancement, 176, 177. Any questions about the neighborhood enhancement fund? Yes, Elder Johnson. Mm -hmm. There's nothing here. <laughs> it's somewhere to go. Okay, we made a change. <laughs> There's a trend here. Um, I think at one point we decided to have um, the real estate specialist to be um, funded 50% from the general fund and 50% from neighborhood enhancement. But the neighborhood enhancement um, for the last number of years now has, has only been bonded for. So we've been funding the neighborhood enhancement with funding um, with bonding. However, we never we do not or would prefer not to um, bond for salaries. For the last several years, we've been putting 50% of the neighborhood um, real, real estate special enhancement and 50% in general fund under Director Grenier's um, area. So when the day is over, we've been um, we've been budgeting under levy for this position 100% just in two budgets. If we're going to continue to do that, it was would be so much easier to uh, stop. I'm using levy dollars to fund 50% of it. Levy dollars in the neighborhood enhancement move it all. Really, we're just consolidating it and putting it all under um, under the um, the director Grenier's area. Um, no budget in, no levy increase other than probably the two percent that this position would normally get. We're just moving and simplifying. Um, it was just trying to make it easier to follow. So that is another change. Director Renier without the G. Oh, I'm sorry. I was super confused. Thank you for clarifying. I was that. Super confused too. What was I? <laughs> Eve, you got a new position. Yeah. Could you change your name, one of you? Just one of you, maybe. All I'm right. Older. I'm older. <laughs> any any uh, any other? What are we approving here? It is all zero. We just approving it as zero then. Well, again, again, we just wanted to show you there was a budget there last year. And so it's really just showing the history. There's there's actuals coming out. And the reason why actuals are so much higher is because there's bonded money. That's why you're not seeing a budget, but you're seeing bonded number um, bonded. Um, there was bonded number um, of funding in this. So this is how it was spent over the time period. So there were numbers there and we wanted to show you why there was a budget last year and no longer this year. OK, All right. So I'll entertain a motion to approve. Not to approve. Second. Motion approved by Elder Johnson, second by Elder Corpus Dax. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Workman's Comp, page 179. Any questions or comments on the Workman's Comp portion? Yes, Elder Johnson. Uh, thank you. One. Um, the, that's the health insurance. That's the health insurance escrow. Yeah, you know it's all under the same category, but it goes by individual pages on this one. So we just have to be one seventy nine, and then one eighty is general liability. One eighty one is health insurance. Well, I will wait. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and do we need to approve each one of these separately? Since we have separate through the um, all right. clerk. Yes, please. Okay. Motion to approve. Second. Okay. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. So we approved the workman's comp. Now general liability is page 180. Any questions on general liability? It's, it's what it is. I'll, I'll move to approve that. Anyone want to second that? Second. 
Second by Alder Corpus Dax. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. And now, health insurance escrow, page 181. Alder Johnson. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'm looking at the 800,000 for police, 200,000 for fire. Was, was this the uh, related to the sick day? Or is this completely separate? The sick what? I can... uh, you know, the, the, we were talking, we had, we've been having conversations about how we have more sick day payouts. Mm -hmm. Is that what this is related to? Yes, this is correct. This is up again, um, year over year, um, last couple of years, we've been spelling, spending well over a million dollars on sick escrow as um, uh, employees are, are retiring. Um, so we have actually gone into a negative fund balance in this, the ARP 704 fund. So um, we need to anticipate and budget more dollars. And I, again, we have talked about it, um, those dollars, this will continue to be well over a million dollars until there is any drastic change in a police or fire contract which is not anticipated. Um, so you have a small amount that goes to really administrative or other departments, and then the bulk of it is police and fire. So it's not, it's not sick pay, it's for health insurance, right? It's it is when, when, a, uh, when a, an employee um, fully retires with the Wisconsin retirement right. system, if they have sick hours on the books, they I can see. put you that into an that. escrow. They can also convert some vacation time and okay. um, if, if, if at any point they, um, you are over a max for a couple of years before you retire, you can start converting some vacation time into these buckets. What that allows you to do is once you're fully retired with the Wisconsin retirement system and you opted to, you move that into a sick escrow, you can draw upon that to help pay for your health insurance. It can either be That's, health insurance, yeah. Health insurance act with actively with the city of Green Bay if you want to continue to take their insurance at retiree rates, or you can um, also go get your own insurance pay the premium, submit it, and then we, um, it draws upon this, this reserve, this, this account that we have on file for you to help pay for your... I was looking at the other end. It's to pay for health insurance, but it comes from sick pay and vacation pay. Thank you. Okay. Um, motion to, is there a motion to approve? So moved. So moved by Alder Johnson. I'll second that. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Okay. So now we are on pages 183 to 193, Revenue General Fund. Just a reminder, I mean, if you're looking at the electronic version, it would be on page 188, 188 through 198. This is all the money coming in, right? Good. Correct. This would be any revenue that is brought in. Your very first line is the levy and portion that we would be requesting right now is proposed. Levy that is proposed for the general fund and every other line item is some other version of um, revenue coming in, whether, whether it's through a pilot, through um, state aid, it's any other money that is the levy portion that is needed um, to cover our expenses. So with the increase in the $300,000 under law, do we have to change something under here? Eventually in this book, yes, line number one, if nothing else changes, the increase that we put 220 minus the $50 and minus, or in the $50 minus the 3,000, yes, it would get netted in that 44 million three. Um, at this point, um, you changing the expenses automatically, yes, would, would increase that levy line item, but at this point, I wouldn't expect you to have to um, modify that number because we are really modifying on the expenses side of the offset would okay. be the revenue. Okay, okay. All right, is there a motion to approve the revenue I have portion? A question. I have a question. Oh, I'm sorry, question, Alder Corpus. Deck. So with, um, thank you, uh, with 40, line item 44110 tavern license, is that taking it back up to what we had initially proposed? as far as like maxing out um, what we are charging for the different licenses? Correct. Um, we did go back and look at, we did go back to look at the motion that was made by the council this past year. And it really was a one-time change. It wasn't a long-term change. So if for some reason 
we would decide to again almost do a 50 percent 40 percent reduction in um those licenses it would have to go fully through a council again um to get those changed this is putting it back to what um were our standard rates okay Uh, Alder Johnson. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Director Ellenbecker, it looks to me like when I'm looking at state shared revenue and personal property taxes, we're seeing increases in those areas. Is that accurate? That is correct. Um, on the pers um, personal property line item, the 43415, um, I'm going to say there is four of them in a row, the 414, 415, 431, 531 might be the next one. Um, also, those are all estimates that we get from Wisconsin Department of Revenue. Um, they send us a form. This is their estimated amount that they plan to send us. Okay, so, I mean, what is, how did they calculate that? I mean, why did they send us shared revenue? Like, I mean, in these particular accounts? Can you be more specific, um, which, explain that, um, Say that sure. I mean, so, so let's just take, you know, for example, the 414, the state shared revenue. I mean, they're going to increase how much they're giving us by 23%. Um, is that just because they want to give more support to us? Sure. Somehow I feel like it's not that simple. <laughs> that, let me, can you verify? I think we're not seeing the whole description. I think that's on our utility payment line. But if you can give me one moment, let me look that account up to make sure I'm talking the right line item. Some cases uh, when they truncate the description. Yeah, I mean, even like the state aid video, you know, was another line that was was up quite a bit, so. Well, let me start with the 414. That is our utility um, payment. Um, that is a um, an item that is driven specifically by the Pulliam plant. So this has been bounced, oh, this one has bounced around two years ago we budgeted 700,000 and because of them shutting down some of their units, um, we ended up only getting 400,000. Um, um, so that was, as you can see, that was in 2019. So then when it came to the 2020 budget, we budgeted 351 as being very conservative because I already took another reduction in um, so that we didn't get hit again. And we ended up getting in 432,000. Um, I'm sorry, I think, um, so we got something in slightly over what we budgeted for 2020. The 2020, um, 2020 actuals is only 15% of the number. We get the remaining 85% in November. Um, what happens is now the um, DOR came back and estimated 432. There's two calculations within the state uh, utility payment. One is based on it equalized value times a factor. And then there's also megawatts on how many, um, how much me megawatts they have um, kicking out on their different units. Because of the equalized jumping up so much, um, that has driven up a portion of the calculation. So in a year from now, if equalized starts dropping and coming back down, that number is going to come back down. So it's a, it's a calculation, um, a couple different factors, and the state is estimating the 432 um, for the 2021 um, payment for our uh, state utility uh, payment from the pool implant. We did get confirmation that is that one unit is expected to um, continue to um, continue to uh, stay running and that the megawatts output is about going to be the same year over year. So at this point, I'm sorry, that was a long discussion, but at this point, we'll with the 432 now that I better understand the calculation and how we get reimbursed for that um, power plant. Okay. Then the next item that you discussed, um, if you go down to line 43614 and the line right below it, if you look that the state aid video went from 93 up to 184, the next line of 826 went down to 715. I have to throw it out of my calculator, but I think they almost wash each other. So I'm going to click. First line um, comes out to about 278,000. Oh, nope, that came, yes, 278. So, or, but it went up about 90,000. And the other uh, line went down about 90,000. That was a state change in um, cable TV. Um, the state has changed, and I might have to look at the um, um, assistant director, uh, Manley. They changed the, can you step in, please? Yeah, they, they changed the rate that um, the franchise providers were paying us. So they reduced it by half a percent 
for this year, and now next year they've reduced it by a full percent. But the state, with their change, they realized that that was an impact to the municipalities. So to make it up, they've created this additional state aid where they're paying us for the video service providers. Okay, good. And then um, I just have uh, just two more questions. So one is I'm seeing um, reduced state aid for the bridges. Is that because that is going to the county now? Um, yes, in most cases, um, that is because um, the yeah the bridge we used to get reimbursed for the bridge tenders, and when those no longer have the expenses, we also are no longer getting the revenue. That is the majority of the change, correct? Okay, thank you for confirming that. And then just one final question for uh, Director Ditchay, and it's related to Bay Beach because if I'm not mistaken, I think we were intending to use um, the uh, the balance that Bay Beach had to subsidize the losses of operating the park this year. Um, if, if we head into next year, I mean, we're planning for a full season. And if we don't hit these marks, I guess, what is our contingency plan if the park ends up operating at a loss again? Mm -hmm. Ult ultimately, uh, we would just have to carry that over into the next year then. So at some point, we'll have an, a season that operates uh, successfully. Uh, each year, we project that a certain amount of dollars goes into that, uh, that account uh, to give us that buffer. And if we don't hit those numbers next year, it would just be carried over into the year after that. The other option, if we don't wanna carry it over, carry over that debt into the future year, uh, would be that the city could always uh, budget for that debt or, or that would be another option, but I, don't, I wouldn't recommend that at this point. I would recommend you just carry that debt over into a future year. So when you say that we cover that debt, meaning that we find some, some funding from uh, from the levy to, to cover that, right? That's a possibility, yes, okay. uh, if the council wanted to do that. So we do have the ability to carry a deficit on that account, is that? Is that That's right? my understanding, but uh, uh, Director Allenbecker uh, can uh, respond to that, please. Um, sure. Yeah, I'm correct. Um, yeah, so what the, we are really talking about general fund at this point, and right now in, within that general fund, there is no um, extra dollars built in there for Bay Beach as we keep all their revenues and expenses completely separate. Um, we are down a few lines is number 30 is when we would really be talking about Bay Beach revenue. Um, but at this point, there's nothing built into the general fund to help out um, Bay Beach if they were to um, not have enough revenues to ex cover their expenses in this year or in next year. Um, again, there's a couple options, like you said. Um, one, is a, it is a, what we call a special revenue fund. And as long as you would have anticipation that the following year they'd have enough revenue to cover their expenses, you could go to a negative fund balance. We have other negative, another other accounts that went negative at year end with the anticipation that you're gonna make it up in a future year. So that would be a situation we could allow that for Bay Beach. Um, if they were to go in a negative fund balance, you know, they always have a capital account. They could always try to, yeah, an account that wasn't obligated. They could potentially move it back on their operating fund. But at this point, we did not budget anything in a levy to support Bay Beach in the 2021 budget. Does council have to take action on on that? Hypothetically, let's say we do operate at a deficit next year. Who who makes the decision about whether we use funds versus carrying that debt? If you were to take money from the general fund, something that was unbudgeted, it would have to be a council action um, to move it. Again, part of it is because we also set, set it up as a special revenue fund, which is supposed to cover its own expenses. So if you choose to take levy dollars and move it to that fund, um, it would have to be a council action. And also if you choose to move uh, money from the development account back into the operations account, that would also take uh, council action uh, to do that. Okay, but so carrying, would carrying the debt, is that something that is made at a staff level? Is that a decision at the staff level? I guess I guess it has been if if and when if it just turns into a, yes if they have less uh, more less revenue than they had expenses um, and it turns into a negative fund balance um, I guess it probably would be at a staff level um, it certainly is something that is um, if you want 
more attention it could be brought back to the um to the council for this decision yeah and i have no doubt that if we end up in that situation i know director did will keep us surprised of what's happening i'm just you know and maybe i'm spending too much time asking hypotheticals but i don't think it's a hypothetical that's far off from the truth recognizing that we don't know what's going to happen yet you know with 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 the pandemic like potentially in the operation of the park. So I'm just trying to be, and, and I think it's important for us to all be prepared about scenarios that, you know, could potentially impact the financial health of the park. So I'm good, thank you. Okay, all right, so we are, we were on. Uh, maybe, General, uh, from 183 to 193. So um, do I have a motion to, Approve that. Alder Galvin, no, would you like to? Okay, Alder Galvin, move to approve. Is there a second? Second by Alder Corpus Dax. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. All right, on to item 25, which is sanitary sir, which is simply page 194. And 199 electronic version. Any questions about page 194? Four. Seeing no questions, I'll entertain a motion to approve the motion sanitary to approve. sewer. Motion to approve by Alder Galvin. I'll okay. second it. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Alder Dorf, I didn't realize you gave me a long leash on that. And I was like, what are you doing? But okay. Okay, revenue all at one time. My apologies. That's right. Because that, I, I finally figured out what was happening, and I thought I'm just going to let him go. Okay. Thank you for that. That's right. All right. Now we're, a lot of questions. Yeah, it was. We are on page 195. Wait, did we approve that yet? We page yes. yes. We, we did approve 194. Okay. Page 195. Parking. General. Automatic version. Page 200. Okay. Uh, any. Questions on parking? Nope, hearing none. Alder Galvin, do you approve motion it? Motion to approve. Motion to approve. I will second it. All those in favor say aye. 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 Polis, motion carries. All right, we're on page 196. DPW equipment replacement. Page 196. Any questions on page 196? Well, there's no numbers on page 196. Again. Very similar to a uh, to an earlier item, we used to utilize the 203 fund. We have now gone to other special uh, a capital project fund. A capital instead. project okay. fund, as opposed to a special revenue fund. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 Zero second. page. Anyone else want to second that? A second uh -huh. by all the purpose Dax. All those in favor say aye. Uh -huh. Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Now we're on revenue transit P page. No, wait. Storm sewer, right? Page 197. Yes. Page 197, storm sewer. I feel like I did this one right, but it must have been something else. Any questions on page 197? I have none. All right. Do you, would, would you like to move, to approve, move to approve by Elder Corpus Dex? Second. Second by Elder Galvin. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Now we're on Bay Beach, which, okay. Page 200, Bay Beach. Pretty much covered it, right? I think we did. How about, would you like to make that motion, Alder Johnson? Sure, I'll, I'll move to approve. Okay, Wait, I'll second we, that. Did we end up skipping a page on accident there, or did I miss Did that? I skip a page? Well, did I, I skip page transit? transit operating? Yeah, Sorry. Transit. That's okay. Let's move back to page transit is actually 198 and 199. Electronic okay. version would be 203 and 204. I will move to approve this transit unless there's an, any discussion. Second. Second by Alder Corpus Dex. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Aye, opposed, which cares. Okay, now Bay Beach. Now here's your moment, Alder Johnson. 
To approve. Second. Move to approve by Elder Johnson, second by Elder Corpus Dax. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Um, we are on page 201-202, Revenue Debt Service. 201-202. Any other further questions on Revenue Debt Service? I'll entertain a motion to approve. Motion to approve. Motion to approve by Elder Galvin. I'll second it. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Motion carries. We are on. I got to move this down a little bit. Um, equipment replacement funds revenue, pages 203 to 208. 203 to 208. There's zeros here too, but there's a lot of zeros. Did things get moved here too, like for police and fire and? Nope, that would confirm that we have not really put any equipment into our budget. So if you're looking, I will go. Ooh, because we bonded it. Got it. Okay. Okay, yes. Any questions on, yeah. The only one you're seeing is that there's some equipment replacement is on page 203, which is our IT area. I see that. Yes. Yep. And again, there's a large change. There are a large reduction. And in this case, it really wasn't reduced. It was moved to the IT department. It was really ongoing annual maintenance, software maintenance, and it really is an operational item. So we took it out of the capital account. So it was really a wash on that line. Item. But at this point, yes, if you'll confirm 423, we did not budget for any capital equipment, 424 fire department. No, um, so police, fire, inspection, we had, uh, and um, parks. Arcs. And DPW is where um, is, we did not budget for any capital equipment in our operating budget. Okay. Is there a motion to approve this portion of the revenue? To approve. Motion to approve. Or second. Motion to approve by Elder Jensen, second by Elder Galvin. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Okay. So then we're on revenue neighborhood enhancement, page 209. Again, back to zero, we stopped levying for, in this department, for half of a re real estate specialist, and that now has been moved. So that's and why you you're- ex You explained that before a bit. So, all right. I'll move to approve this. Yes. Second by Elder Johnson. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed aye. Nay. aye. Motion carries. Okay. Then, revenue workman's compensation, page 210. Move to approve. Move to approve by Elder Johnson. I'll second that. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Motion carries. And now we are on general liability, page 211. Um, any questions on general liability? No. Okay. Did you want to Motion move to approve? approve that? Move to approve by Elder Galvin. Second. Is there a second? Okay, second by Elder Corpus Dax. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, and then revenue, health insurance, escrow, page 212. Um, any questions on that? No. No. No? All right. Who wants to move it? Motion to approve. Motion to approve by Elder Galvin. Second by Elder Dorf. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. So we did change, last year we didn't change it at all. So we didn't make a motion overall at the end because there was no change. This year there is a change. So I'm not sure the procedure here, do we need to make a motion to approve the whole thing as amended or because we did each individual section do we not need to do that well if you don't mind i can give you a quick recap of what changes were made and what impact that has had all right okay so um yes there has been three changes that were um um, there were three amended items we added two hundred twenty thousand dollars to law for really for litigation 
Um, we added $50 to the weights and measures. It was really a counting adjustment in our budget book. And then we also, um, we were able to take $2,000, I'm sorry, $3,000 out of the city hall um, expense line item. That is a change of $217,050. Um, there's one more that I would recommend. It's only a $2,000 change, but I would thought it would be worth to offer up. Um, and I should, I apologize. I should have taken that when we went talk to the general fund um, revenues. Are you interested in seeing a $2,000 change? Yes, sir. Is it like, does it make it better? It would Here, make go it ahead. better. Go ahead. I should have brought it up at that time. Um, back on page, it's a very, again, small change, but we... Okay. Was some um, attorney Chavez had um, offered up, and it would be on page 186. Um, in the law department, um, there is $500 in there, and the attorney said that they believe that they would be doing draw, um, bill backs of more like 2500 so I'd be looking to add $2,000 of revenue into that line item. Motion to reconsider. Uh, uh, Second. All those in favor of reconsideration, say aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Motion to add $2,000 to line item 47400. So is that is that it? Is that right? Okay. Is there a second? I'll second, second it. it. Okay. Oh. We'll all second it. I'll, I seconded <laughs> it. All right. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carries. And now we have to do the whole amended thing. Now we have to amend the whole. Um, can I give you one more um, bit oh, of information? Yeah. Sure. So again, so that is now a total change of change of increasing the um, expenses in total, or then in, in changing, increasing the levy of two hundred fifteen thousand fifty dollars, and the mm -hmm. impact on the mill rate. Um, again, this is assessed mill rate. Um, it is taking our mill rate um, from what is nine forty six on the assessed version up to nine seventy nine, which would increase it by thirty three cents, which is now a three point four percent increase. Um, Did we go over the ERP or anything or the? Um, we, we would be able to still within the calculation. We can stay within that calculation. Um, we would bring any change we would need to bring. Again, that's where we adjusted in the Packer overtime line item. We would be able to make that adjustment before the um, council meeting. Um, just on this, on the other tax and jurisdictions always talk on equalized value. Um, we are at an equalized mill rate of 852. This would take us to an 844. We would still show a 1% reduction on the equalized side. But the portion that affects your tax bill is assessed. So um, I, we were at a 3% increase. This would take us up 3.4 based on what your, rec your um, amended budget. Do we have to go back and reapprove the whole the whole law? Just not that line, but do we have to approve? Uh, no, I think, it, I, think, I think you would just have to um, approve line number 24, which is the item in which it falls into line 24 is your re re revenue for the general fund and law would fall under that category so if you were to amend we it okay okay yeah. we did that okay all right so now are we going to end the night with this increase barb i'd just like to make a comment sure go ahead alder uh, vander least you know uh adding more to the tax burden at this time i think is not a good idea for a lot of people. And uh, I wouldn't support, you know, adding another 215,000 and, and, and going from 3% to 3.5 or whatever it might be, or 3.4. Uh, I, I just don't feel it's real good timing at this time uh, due to our economic environment, you know, right across the board for the city. A lot of people, you know, 3% is, 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 is an increase in, uh, I just don't feel that it's really the best timing to do more increase that we already that we already have. In other words, the mayor proposed a certain budget, and uh, I didn't expect to you know add another two hundred and some thousand. Uh, that's my thoughts, and uh, I, I think it's bad timing right now. Personally, that's how I feel, and uh, I really couldn't support any more increases. So, thank you. Um, uh, Director Allen Becker, so on uh, doing the hundred thousand dollar home again, this adds 
or $34 for every 100,000 that your home is assessed. Is that correct? Yeah. Uh, you're muted. Yes, okay. it would be okay. 33 cents, yep, per 100,000. 33 cents. So it would so it'd be ended up being $33 increase. A $33 per 100,000. Well, and I understand why we increased it and I agreed and I voted on it and, and we do need to increase that. We absolutely need to do that. So I guess what we'll just have to do is is go to council with this because we did approve it all the way down, down the line. So Alder Johnson. Yeah, I was just gonna comment. I mean, we've, we've, I mean, there's not a final vote that we need to take based on the agenda. So it'll be advanced as is. And I think there's right. obviously a number of alders who are not on the call today that will likely want to propose some modifications. And I think if we're gonna be pragmatic about this, we know that's coming. So okay. I don't think yeah. we need to reconsider anything and let it go before the full council and I agree. Make modifications. Okay. All right. So then let's go on to international. The next finance committee meeting will be held on Tuesday, November 17th at 4.30 p.m. Personnel will be held on Tuesday, November 17th at 4.30 p.m. And the contingency account is probably down from 93.322, but what is it now? Do we know the magic number? Um, we do. Um, actually, in the last um, finance committee meeting, we also approved um, two different contingency items, and now we approved one tonight. Um, you're just not seeing the impact yet. The general entry hasn't been completed. So last meeting, we did the tornado siren of 17,000 rounded. Um, we had some admitted taxes about $4,500 and then the 45,000 that we approved today. That would take us our contingency down from 93,322 to $26,697.70. Okay, thank you. All right, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn this meeting. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn by Alder Galvin. Second by Alder Corpus Dex. Aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you all for your patience. Thank you. Meeting.